Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Dark Art Society podcast. My name is Chet Zar, and I'm your host. This week, we have Meets Meyer on to discuss AI and art and how AI is affecting art and how AI will affect artists. Now, um, I'm sure you're aware because it, uh, let's, uh, uh, it is December 13th, 2022. You may be aware if you're online that there is a big debate about AI and AI art and traditional artists versus AI artists. And the dialogue is getting ugly with both sides angrily pointing fingers at the other. And it's just not a good way to have a conversation about a technology that is here and that is coming whether anybody likes it or not and um we should understand what we're at least what we're arguing about uh so it's important to talk to each other about this uh without insulting each other and without <clears throat> calling names um Forcing people to choose sides. I think all of this is just not helpful to the discussion. And if there are problems, which there definitely will be problems that come from something this big, um, discuss, discussion is crucial and communication is crucial. And if we're not communicating, it's, it's not going to help. It's not going to help anybody. So I thought it would be a good idea to uh, get somebody on the podcast who I know and trust and is a good friend of mine and I know is not full of shit and doesn't have any hidden agendas. Meets is a good guy. He's a trustworthy guy. I've known him for a long time. And I also know he's been working with this technology for a while now. And he's kind of an OG digital artist as well. So... You seem like the perfect guy to talk to. Anyway, so that's coming up. What have I been up to? I have been shipping orders from my website. And I'm almost done, thank God. It's been a lot of work. I've got about, I think, six or seven mystery boxes left. And then we are done with them. Done shipping them. And then I got a few other orders. That's all I've been doing. I haven't really been able to do any art. I worked a little bit on this one. This study that I still owe. And um, I have a lot of things I need to do, but I haven't been able to do them because I've been working on shipping orders, which is how it always is during the holidays. Uh, if you want to order something, you can. There's still time, possibly. The uh, Let's see, I think the t December 19th is the last day to ship stuff out. Uh, to get to get orders in by Christmas or to get them delivered by Christmas. You can go to chetdar.bigcartel.com and order something, and maybe you'll get it <laughs> in time for Christmas. Anyway, we try and get the orders out. Uh, we try and get them all delivered by Christmas. Uh, we can't always guarantee it, but we, we do our best for sure. Um... Yeah, so that's pretty much everything that's been going on with me. Not too exciting. Um, if you want to support the podcast, you can go to patreon.com slash darkartsociety and join for as little as a dollar. If you join at the $5 level, you will be entered into a drawing to win a free skull from the Skull, skull Shop, S-K-U-L-S-H-O-P-P-E. They make amazing artificial skulls. I love them. I use them for all my reference, for all my paintings where I need skull reference. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, I'm doing that. I, I, I do do it monthly. I do the drawing monthly. I'm going to do it next week for sure. I'm all prepped for it. I'm just I'm not able to do it today. So I will do it next week uh, for sure. And also I have a, I have a personal Patreon, uh, which is patreon.com slash Chetzar, C-H-E-T-Z-A-R. If you want to check that out, you can join also for as low, little as a dollar a month. Okay. 
And uh, we do have a new subscriber to the Dark Art Society Patreon, and I will read her name, Tabitha Lar. Thank you, Tabitha. And uh, she will be entered into the skull drawing because she joined at the $5 level. So, yes, that's it. Let's get on with the interview. Uh, God, I feel like I'm forgetting something. I do this every time. I guess I should write this stuff down. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, let's get on with it. You don't want to hear me talk. You want to hear meats talk. Uh, this is a great... I think everybody on either side of this issue needs to hear this episode. Because it's really informative. And try and just be keep an open mind about it. Just listen. Try and keep an open mind. That's all I ask. Okay. That's it. Here we go. And uh, hope you enjoy it. My interview with Meatsmeyer. Hello, Meats. Hello, Chet. Thank you for coming on the show. Oh, man. My huge, huge pleasure. Thanks for having me on. Oh, yeah, always. It's been too long, actually. It's a Indeed. shame it has to come. It has to be for <laughs> to <laughs> no, try. This is all positive. All the AI stuff is positive, in my opinion. Yes, yes. No, I, I wanted to. Uh, yeah, I just I, I, I just was kind of joking that it's a shame that it that it took this <laughs> this big uproar to get you back on the show, because I would have you on any time anyway. But oh, yeah. um, more for the future. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I felt like, you know, um, I mean, we're, you know, we're talking, hanging out as friends and everything as well. But I mean, the 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 reason I wanted to have you on was uh, mainly to talk about the whole AI thing, because it's so controversial mm -hmm. and so many people are so upset on either yeah. side of it. And it's like. Mm -hmm. Seeing people I know saying horrible things to other people I know and like is just mm -hmm. like, it's so ugly. It really is. Yeah. There's all sorts of people that are like unfollowing me and, you know, saying rude things to me. And um, I, I think it's, you know, mo mostly unwarranted, you know, and there's a lot of details here that kind of right. need to be unpacked. It's a very complex subject, you know, as you, as you know, yeah. uh, you know, the world's changing right now and, and change is difficult. Yeah. I yeah, absolutely. I agree. And I, and I, and I feel like, um, let me just tell you where I'm at with it at this point. I had, a, um, when it first came, AI first came out, when you were seeing all the stuff going around, I was like, uh, oh, wow, that's crazy. Artists should probably learn this. And I left it at that really, you know, I don't have time to mess with it right now. So I just was kind of like, wow, this looks like something artists should learn. Yeah. Then I had, uh, then I saw Steven Zapata's uh, uh, video on his argument against image AIs. Mm -hmm. And, and I s listened to that and I learned more about the technology and copyright infringement issues and this and that. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, Ooh, okay, this is a little more <laughs> complicated. So mm -hmm. then I had him on the podcast and we talked about it and it made me, you know, my, my opinion became more like, Oh, okay. There is this other potential copyright issue that needs to be dealt with somehow it is pretty serious and oh, yeah. blah 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 so um then in the meantime after you know since that since i posted that video i had continued to do research and watch videos and even play with um stable diffusion just a simple one on their the on their front page of their website the basic mm -hmm. basic one and then, and I started just to get a better understanding of how it works and how you can use it between this and watching videos and, and, um, uh, and I don't really feel like I've, I, I guess I've, I'm more, um, I'm more sympathetic to the AI side of it now. And, mm -hmm. and, but it, but I have, it's like, it's weird. It's like it had my, my overall view hasn't really changed, but because I still do think there's like, ethical copyright issues and all that stuff mm -hmm. that need mm -hmm. to be dealt with. So it's mm -hmm. like, but it just, it doesn't need to be, you know, you, you're a hardliner and, and you know, you're either on the, the good guy side or the bad guy side, depending. <laughs> about that. I got a couple, cats. I got, I got a couple kittens here. They, they might make an appearance. That was amazing. <laughs> um, Get out of here. The, 
<laughs> that was great. <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah, if you're watching on YouTube, you'll, you're will you in for a treat. Or if you're not watching on YouTube, watch it on YouTube and you'll be in for a treat right there. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, anyway, um, yeah, so that's kind of where I'm at with it. I'm totally like, as an artist, I'm so inspired, creatively inspired, because I'm seeing like, Oh, I could use this to do this and this and this and yeah. this that will that will benefit what I'm doing here, my main thing. So powerful. You know what I mean? Um, but I'm not like a guy doing a service for people. I'm not like mm -hmm. a work for hire guy anymore like I used to be. Like yeah. I'm not really doing concept art. So it's like I get the the fear and anxiety on the other side there. So mm -hmm. I am completely sympathetic to the people that are freaking out about it. A lot of fear. So anyway, that's sort of where I'm at now. And I thought it would be good to um, bring you on to give your point of view. Because I'm really just, I want to learn about this. I think everyone needs to learn about it, regardless of how you feel about it. It's important. For sure. Yeah, especially like if you're really going to go against it and attack it, the more you know about it, the actual really how it works, right. the more the, the more power you're going to have to fight. True. <laughs> really, just going in there, just thinking, okay, AI isn't real. It's just a it's an algorithm that just steals images and replaces right. it back on there. If you attack it like that, you're going to get laughed out because that really isn't how it worked. It's like really true AI. Right. It's the AI right now. It's like the artificial narrow intelligence is what it's called. So you can train it on certain individual things, and it really does make decisions. And I might say very very good decisions as well as far as composition. It's basically studied every single artist you know, like the, from all, all of history, all of their greatest artisans, putting all that information together. Um, and generally it, it really didn't learn everything it, it knows from artists. And that's kind of the thing I'm seeing it around. It's like, Oh, that's AI. AI is a hundred percent stolen from artists. And that's really not true. Right. It learns most of its information about the world through photographs and a thing called image pairs, where it's an image and then a district descriptive text information about that. So it goes, okay. And then it, it looks at millions of images, say, say it's a, a, the, the object is like an apple. It goes through and looks at millions of different images and starts to really get kind of a 3d, um, knowledge of that information inside of its brain and so it learns about the the world that way and it could really actually operate just fine without any artists now with the artist part what happens is that it looks at an artist's um say website like your site and it'll go through and look at all the images and it sees what kind of connections chet czar has to this particular kind of thing and it's, it uses a thing called neural networks which works very similar to our own brains of how our own brains works and so it could actually do what's called a style transfer. You know, right now I, I most likely could take um, your artwork, you know, put it, feed it in there and get something very similar kind of, you know, from what you've done. Right. And then I could mix it in all everything else that it's learned and get kind of something brand completely brand new. Right. You know, I can make a Chazar piece that has like a, a uh, asset or object that has nothing to do with what you've ever attacked before right. but it will use that style transfer to add that on there um you can mix a million different artists together and get something completely new as well right um but yeah it's actually it's funny because one of the very very first thing i did almost a year ago is tried to create your artwork i don't know if you remember that it's like i i knew you'd be cool you know i was kind of a little bit nervous i didn't want to do my own artwork because that's kind of a biased thing uh -huh. i was like I really want to see if I can say Cesar explain one of his pieces perfectly and get that. And at the time, it didn't really know know you very well. But it, I mean, it seems like it kind of saw some stuff and there was some similarities. But, you know, I, it was mostly at the time it was kind of early on in mm -hmm. the technology. And I got some really cool things. It's like a, a guy with a beard with a five out of his beard. Uh, did you, you send know, me put, this? I, I did show it because I don't I remember. I'll, I'll have to send that <laughs> to, send you it to me again. It's That's really so pretty cool images. Like I just said, a guy with a, <laughs> a, a, a character with a top hat with a five on it and a beard. You know, I tried to basically, I looked at, I think, one of your artworks. Right, right. To explain it. Let's see what this thing does, you know, because when I first looked at it, I was like, okay is this stealing from artists? And I really attacked it from that point. You know, I love my artist friends. And I, I love art. You mm -hmm. know, I don't want to, um, I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to use something that is unethical, really. Yeah, so I really kind of I, I tried to use people's different art to see if it was. And the more I learned about it, the more I realized that you cannot achieve an exact image of some somebody's thing directly using like standard prompts. Right. You know, there's other ways to do it using. AI, yeah. Sure, but yeah. you really cannot. Yeah. It's, it's a blend of everything that it's learned together. Yeah. I, I, that's part of the reason I wanted to have you on it to, to discuss this, because. 
I think people trust me. The people that listen to the podcast know that I'm not full of shit and, and, and I'm mm-hmm. good to my word. Indeed. And and I know you and I know that you're a good guy and you're not an unethical person. I'm so really. so it's like because you know, there are people on the AI side that are just so pro AI, fuck everything. You know, they're really, they're hardliners as well, yeah. and they have no consideration for any of the other issues. And Big so that they're, to me, that their, their take on it is not as valid as someone who I know is like a, an ethical person that cares about artists. And is it a true artist and that cares about art? And you've been a technical artist, like, a, or a digital artist, I guess I should say, since back in the day. And we've talked about this on the old, years, yeah, yeah f- from the last podcast where you were doing stuff that people do nowadays on their phone for fun. You were doing it back when people couldn't tell if it was real or not. Those weird, yeah. your, your weird sculptures and all that. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I started with airbrush stuff. stuff, you know, so I have a little bit of the right. traditional artist, you know, beginnings. And then I, I got hired to do like video game work just randomly, you know, back in Salt Lake, uh, you know, before I really knew anything about it. And I was just like, uh, that was before even 3D started. I basically, my, I've seen the entire evolution of every bit of digital right. work, you know, since the literally the very beginning. And then also I started you know, AI stuff and learning about that from really the very beginning when it started to really kind of come out and be a usable kind of a thing that I could use on my own computer. Mm-hmm. So I feel like I have a good kind of base of 27, 30 years, right. of really just every day, hardcore studying everything about it. And so, um, and you're not the owner of an AI company that's saying this stuff. That's the thing. It's like, you're kind of like, you're sort of the, I think, a, a, perfect person to be talking to about this you know what i mean cool that's so how i I've feel really about. dived into this like really super hardcore like about four or five years ago i worked at this company called fox vfx lab and we had people from nvidia come and show us this new technology they hey there's this in- image transfer stuff and i was blown away by it they showed me how, how it worked all that kind of stuff and like for the last four years i've been kind of waiting okay has, is it time yet that i can start using this and it wasn't until around january it started to pop out and actually mm-hmm. be used so I kind of have a little bit of a base, but man, I jumped in so hardcore. I, I literally took three months off of work, you know, decently paid work, you know, right. that I could sit and study this, you know, and then I got an offer wow. to go speak at THU festival in Portugal about it. So I was like, okay, I got to talk about it. So and then I just dive, dove in like nobody's business. And I really, I mean, I, I talked to the owners of the companies. I talked to every little thing. I, I, on my computer, I have um, this program called visions of chaos and anybody that's listening, please, and if you're at all interested in AI stuff and you have a very high, a good video card, which is kind of the most important part, mm-hmm. um, definitely download that because what it does, it, it gives you this, it's this guy that assembles all of the, the AI stuff, all the millions of AI stuff that's coming out. Um, and raise it comes out, he has it available, you know, so I don't have to search it out. I don't have to install it because there's a lot of programming and oh, Python wow. involved with that. So it's like right there. So I have like the connection to everything that's happening. Um, that's cool. And, and so I've really learned about all these millions of things. You know, it's a lot of times when I talk to AI about people, people about AI, um, they, they see mid journey as AI. And so that's just a little, that's a piece of AI. I consider it like the McDonald's of AI. <laughs> you go in there, you type a prompt and you get some really cool stuff. Right. It's not adjustable. You know, you, you, if you were doing it, you know, for an actual, um, you know, job, it would be near impossible to use that. Cause they say, Hey, change that a little bit here. And, um, you wouldn't be able to, you know, mm. but on the other side is visions of chaos, like with the open stable diffusion kind of stuff. It's just tools. It's a million incredible tools with brains. You know, it's things like super resolution. You take a small image that's at jagged edges and blow it up and redraws it perfectly. The AI figures out all the right. Well, that's in between. That's even in Photoshop now. They had yeah, or exactly. they recently put that in yeah. Photoshop to where that's AI that's blowing the yeah. blowing pictures. Well, out. Yeah. Photoshop has actually embraced um, AI stuff like completely, mm. you know, so and all of the 3D packages will start getting AI, you know, portions and modules added to it within the next year. Wow. So when I see my digital artist friend saying, vowing that they'll never use AI, that means that they're pretty much stuck in the mud now because they'll no longer be able to use their 3D program or Photoshop without actually touching it. Yeah. And all this <laughs> stuff, the thing that I've been saying to people is that, Right now, they're called AI tools. In the next couple of years, they're just going to be called tools. You know, right. you're just going to use these tools that are smart. You know, I've spent 25 years working with dumb tools, like horribly angering tools that don't know <laughs> what the heck's going on, especially with 3D packages, you know, as as it's 
the evolution of those packages. Um, you know, so I, I'm embracing these tools that can kind of think a little bit and give me exactly what I want. But not only that is kind of partner with me and give me ideas and take me places that I never would have thought of going before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's I mean, that's to me, that's the exciting way I would describe it purely from a, a creative standpoint. I see the potential. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned it before. I see the potential for just like using it for almost everything I do, but not my paintings necessarily. It's like there's, there's that, there's that, there's a video editing program to where it transcribes all the, all the dialogue. Mm -hmm. And when you want to cut a word out like, um, or anything, you, you find the word and delete the word and it makes the cut in the video. And it's like, that is, I, I used to spend like, if I, I've, I've spent like half an hour trying to find a section to cut out, but I scrolling mm -hmm. through, but it's like yeah. it took me two minutes to do it that way. So so those are the kind of I, I think that those are the kinds of things that it will be doing more than like taking over an artist's job completely. It's more right. like doing tasks that nobody really wants to do that are a pain in the ass. But Indeed. but <laughs> having said that, I mean, we do need to consider the potential that you know the one fear that i hear from so many digital artists is what happens when it gets good enough to where the guy who runs the company could just say okay make me you know 50 different orcs for this video game designs and then i'm going to pick one and then i'm going to you know show the one i like have the ai develop that one you know what I'm saying? A hundred percent. In fact, there, in my opinion, there is no doubt that that's going to happen. And it's going to happen sooner than we think. Wow. But I think the reality of all this, and I've been really watching closely, as I mentioned, like mid journey and seeing the evolution of that and seeing what people do. And one thing that I've really noticed is that the prompt, prompt jockeys, like what I call them, mm -hmm. is the people that just sit there and look for images and they just repeat that over and over. There's very, very little creativity. Right. They'll see something that somebody else does and they'll basically have the recipe to create that automatically. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to pay extra on mid journey so to hide your prompts. Right. And if you don't do that, you'll just see i in fact when i was testing it early on i did something pretty cool with the prompt and then i looked and there was like 10 people doing that same prompt it's it's useless it, yeah. it's just a it's a it's not useless it, it it's it creates some really cool stuff and i know people that are using it you know to to kind of create some some ideas and things like that and move forward with it and i think that's great um, but I do always think like whenever artists talk about it, I always say, you know, artists are artists for a reason. You know, we take something that somebody else can do and we times it by 10 and we take it places where nobody else can. You know, that's what or we, we do, do it in our own learn. way. You know? Yeah, exactly. We're going to find ways to take a tool, all these different tools and use them together in a new way that a, a prompt jockey could never do in a million years. Right. And it's the same same thing like when Photoshop one came out, like the clip art, the big conversation of like illustrator clip art kind of stuff like, oh, art's dead. I remember that same conversation then, yeah. you know, art is dead now. It's going to have an automatic thing like people, employers are going to be able to take this clip art, you know, use it how you want. And artists are going to be out of a job. But really what happened is that people were automatically they could tell clip art it's the same thing with mid journey you know you can right. see that's a mid journey thing almost automatically like we that's the that's the way people's minds work you see it a few times you're like okay mid journey i'm already and, seeing you know, people complain about it, it. <laughs> complain about oh i've got uh, you know this was cool at first but now all i see is all these mid journey stuff mid journey yeah, images, and, it, I'm and sick it, of it it kills the excitement of it mm -hmm. and that's you know that that's why i i personally i i signed off a mid journey early on you mm. know it's like okay, no longer doing that and i just use stable diffusion 100 mm. percent because i find that it's much more ethical um like even mid journey the way it's worked it's kind of interesting is that they when you do a mid journey image um you have it gives you four options and you click on one that you like and it does that one better or more. And so it's actually learned like, oh, you like that one. And that way it feeds that one back into the system. <laughs> and um, so it's learning. So it, it so it is learning so when you're learning, using it. Yeah. As it goes. I don't know if you've noticed the quality level over this last year of mid journey. The stuff it's doing oh. now is photographic, beautiful. I just assumed it was from it. like a new version, a newer version of it. It is. It, it's both of those things. Okay. It's kind of new programming. Um, it also actually uses stable diffusion and a few other things that are plugged in kind of like modules into mm. it. 
You know, wow. so any as stable diffusion gets better, mid journey gets better. Whoa. But also, mid journey has that self congratulatory kind of um, prize winning. Okay, let's head towards this way. And so, what mid journey is? It's a combination of all these different artists, the entire world's different artists, being used as prompts into creating something new, and then taking that new thing, putting it back in, and combining it with everything else. Wow. So it is getting better at an incredible rate, you know, is, you just that's look at crazy. Some of stuff. Like if you <laughs> honestly, it's the best artist in the world. And I know that's a controversial subject, but it knows every single style right. out there. So even cutting off any like new modern day digital artists, it still knows every style. You say, give me this an oil painting. It gives you a beautiful looking oil painting. Give me this as a, a technical sketch. It'll do that. A poster. It'll do that. A, you know, crayon. It'll do that. It can make anything in any other way, you know, and it literally is the best artist. And it's like, if you're going to fight against that, like as an artist, it's not going to well, work. But I've, you know, I've often said when talking just about like how good you can get as an artist or as a painter, specifically from a painter's perspective, that all the, you know, the best paintings have already been done. Like the old masters mm -hmm. already did it as as good as you can do it. You're not going to be better than them because they already mastered it in a time when we didn't even, they didn't even have all these technical advancements exactly. that we have. So they it's not, a, it's yeah. And it's not, but it's not about who's the best, especially particularly, uh, particularly for fine artists, but really for any artist who has a vision, it's not about if you're the best artist, it's about if you if your vision is something that people like if it's unique if it's your own mm -hmm. all we have is our vision that's the main thing and the skill part of it is like secondary to the vision really and you'll see this with a lot of modern art that doesn't rely on re realism that's like you know more conceptual stuff or whatever you know what i'm saying right oh indeed so yeah so no, oh, go ahead no no i just i just feel like it's kind of uh that's kind of the same argument in a way that just because it's the most tech say 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 AI is the most technically proficient artist. Mm -hmm. It's not it doesn't have a vision. No way. It doesn't have a unique vision. It doesn't and have it a doesn't unique have perspective. A unique idea. Yeah, that's it. What I've said before is that really what all this is gonna do is again gonna uh kind of take the time and the the um the hardship of creating an idea away and it becomes just about the idea right you know and also it's i think it's going to give you know the world the chance to be able to put a uh, an actual visual to their idea you know people that they people that haven't studied their whole life to do something really good or some somebody that doesn't have a lot of money to pay an artist to do it for them they're all of a sudden going to be able to take that idea and bring it to reality you know to something that people can understand right. i i truly believe that you know it's a gift that's actually going to you know spring up a lot of new ideas that were kind of never would have happened before yeah i definitely think that's one of the 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 uh the the major points the major uh positive aspects of it i felt like when it first was going around was that, wow, all these, you know, people, non-artists are able to create art now and experience mm -hmm. creating art, which is a good thing. You know, that's like a really I good thing. I, I personally think it's a little bit selfish for us to say, no, we, we trained our yeah, whole life right. to do this. You can't do it. I yeah. was already put in the work. So now you can't do it. Right. It is kind of gatekeeper -y. Uh, in a, yeah, in a I mean, I understand, you know, it's the same same type of thing that is when somebody already paid for their college and then like a president says, hey, we're going to do like college loan. Right. Like, hey, <laughs> don't give them a loan because I already paid mine. You know, it's I think feel it's like it's kind of that in that same, you know, vein. Um, but also at the same time, I mean, this is what, you know, I, I really try to get give um, to artists like to help them feel a little bit more positive about this artists are always going to be able to use it than a normal guy, you know, because of how everyone, how this, all this study you do, your art knowledge, your history knowledge will come into play, you know, the composition. And also one of the big things, like when you do 3D, 3D art is that like with stable diffusion, you could do like a batch. So I could get an idea, get something that's pretty good and say, okay, give me a batch of these, go away for an hour. I come back and there's a hundred different versions of that. So now it's up to me to figure out which one of those is best. Right. You can't just put all hundred on there because somebody will go, Oh God, that's why all those things are similar. You know, I, 
but it's more like, you know, if, if I was a photographer for L magazine, you'd shoot a thousand pictures of something and True. choose that one for the cover. Right. And that's where the art director stuff comes in. Um, that's true. The AI stuff to me is about, it's very, very similar to be an art director. And I think that's why you kind of understand it because you understand the overall general, you know, art basis. Mm -hmm. um, and also people that are art directors like myself, um, it's, we're used to trying to explain to somebody else how to get a particular image. And sometimes that includes making a little sketch, you know, that you can show scale, something, you know, a little cocktail right. napkin kind of thing that's like no kind of like this and that's really what the artists have the benefit of and it's uh, people haven't been able to really explore this because like i say the tools that i use are a couple years out or maybe a year out for most, most people because it takes like two or three thousand dollar video cards currently right. 24 gigs of ram in order to do and some knowledge of you know certain things to get these big programs that are you know really kind of early days kind of working together but right. eventually what artists will find out especially 3d artists is that driven ai is the ultimate ai so right now like mid journey you put in a, a prompt of what you want and it's like spinning a wheel you don't know what the hell you're gonna right. get you know you can kind of explain it but it's still very very you know it's a randomized kind of thing but if you make a very simple 3d object and put light on it mm -hmm. and give it to the ai and say make this from it it looks at your lighting that you did and the positioning of that object and it rebuilds that and gives you different variations wow so you can do really low res stuff i've, I've been experimenting with make make Making motorcycles out of just like different primitives you know like the cylinder oh is that what those motorcycles were in your instagram there's yeah a lot of those are so it's a very very simple thing and um i put that in there and say give me like a futuristic motorcycle with neon on it things like that and, and it starts to make things and you go okay that one i like so put it back into the system and now make one from that right so you can take something extremely si like simple and come up with a fully realized rendered thing that actually looks almost ray traced Wow. Like it, it figures out this like 3D, um, it's called latent space. So it's actually like a really 3D thing. And you'll see that it can, it can simulate reflections and ray tracing, Whoa. global illumination. If you add like all of that kind of stuff, it'll, you know, to the, to the prompt, it'll put that in. It's, it's kind of mind blowing. So really artists themselves will be able to harness this stuff way better automatically because they have those skills. Right. So I know a lot of people are like out throwing their hands up and like, Oh, it's this is all over. But really, the tools that are coming up, I guarantee you, are going to be much more powerful in an artist's hands than a non-artist every wow. time. Okay, <laughs> that's good. I it's, mean, it's it's amazing. So so yeah, I mean, if 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 I didn't know anything about this, and you told me that, I would believe you because, like I said, I know you. I trust your judgment. So that's kind of reassuring in that way. And I I feel like uh, you know artists should feel reassured by what you say but let's let's talk a little bit about the ethics issue sure. um what now one thing that also made me feel better that i heard you say online was that the the data that has been used is only like like 80 percent of it isn't even art no, yeah, for sure. It, it le learns most from stock photography sites. And I, I personally hate those guys. I mean, I think they kind of ruin the right. internet. So I think this is a nice just desserts for them, you know, that they get their information taken. <laughs> uh, but I will say, you know, it's, it, it does, it's really easy to think, you know, especially when you see an AI image, like, and someone says, this is all stolen art. Right. It looks like, yeah, it, that had to come from a, a human hand and just replaced. Right. You know, it's really easy to get into that mindset. Um, but you know, but that's really, not the case. It isn't the case, <laughs> you know, and, and in fact, every single, um, image that went through there was obtained legally and right. it, you, some people may not like it, but really what happened is that there's a website, uh, called, um, or a, a company called Lion, L-A-I-O-N. Mm -hmm. And what they do is a, this thing called the, the common crawl. And right. it's much like Google. It's kind of owned by um, Amazon, I believe. And they have petabytes of data of this stuff. So it goes through and crawls through and gets information you know, from that. And it stores that information and it can be accessed legally by everyone. And it's legal because if you upload it to a website, say like uh, ArtStation, ArtStation has, if you look at the terms of service, it says that it allows the, the common crawl. 
And a lot of people are saying, hey, they stole my images. It comes from things like that. Yeah, that's the, a quick. Right. That, no, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to say, just as a quick aside, um, I know Kevin Strike, one of the owner of ArtStation. And even though that there's like a, early on, there was a, a like a prompt, a, a test prompt on there that said right. a painting by Greg Rutowski or whatever, trending on ArtStation. Um, so people assumed automatically that it was just like the AI was just stinky all over their stuff and just stealing it, putting mm -hmm. it in a bag, laughing, you know. <laughs> and um, realistically, he he said that there, he they've observed almost no activity from AI bots. You know, it just doesn't crawl mm -hmm. through those kind of things. It just doesn't really care about them. It doesn't need them, you know. So even though that kind of is out there that, that oh, yeah, it's, they're just stealing all these images, really it's anything that you put onto those sites that have that kind of thing. And what I'm trying to find out now is if anything that's hosted by Amazon has that in their terms of service. Because, you know, so we, we've had a million conversations about this on the web. Um, this guy, James Busby, told me that he, his stuff was all over there and he never signed anything. But then I found out it was hosted by AWS, the company uh. that does all that stuff. So we're trying to find out now if that's in the terms of service for anybody that signs up through, which is a chunk of the Internet. It's like a third of the Internet yeah. is all through that stuff, you know, so. if It, it, you know, it seems like it's more of a of a data collection issue than anything that 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 you know that that issue that's been going on for years that people were talking about years ago oh yeah uh, that, that you know like this sort of um you know for better or for worse is happen is 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 enabled by that you mm -hmm. know so um yeah. so it's kind of it's but 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 okay here's the thing though um technically it's legally gotten you know mm -hmm. Because everyone opted out. Everyone opts out whenever you post anything on any social media, in any website. You every, yeah. and, and the funny thing we'll is, everyone just like clicks OK. <laughs> I mm -hmm. doubt that people go it, through. Yeah, it's like, I fucking click OK half the time. You, but you I, could even try reading it. It's too huge <laughs> and lawyer speak that you wouldn't know what the hell it said anyway. I got to look. I have some notes for you. So, I, But there is one thing I was looking. Uh, actually, oh, it's funny because I was looking around, sort of prepping for this. And I saw... Um, uh, Steven Zapata, who's been very uh, uh, active with, you know, she's with, uh, uh, he's with uh, the the Carla Ortiz crew, that side of it. These people that are digital artists that are concerned about copyright infringement. Mm -hmm. um, not that they're part of a crew, but th that's how I know yeah. them all kind of yeah. in that way. But um, he was uh, doing a live stream this morning. And he brought up the, uh, uh, what was it called? It's the lion. Mm -hmm. It was some, ah, uh, I didn't, I didn't, uh, I, I didn't, I took a picture of the screen like an old man and I cut off the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> cause I, I don't like using my phone for this shit, but, um, ah, oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. It's some, like a new version of the data set that uses lion or something like this. Mm -hmm. Anyway, on the, um, the it says on the front page of this data set warning beware wait, blah 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 uh, blah blah wait a minute okay that the large scale data set is non curated is built for research purposes blah blah testing blah 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 and is not meant for any real world production or oh, the or application and so to me, you know, and to artists, particularly artists that are on that, the copyright side of the aisle that are really more concerned about the copyright issue, that seems like, okay, that seems like a violation of copyright law right there. Because, because the, 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 unless I'm misunderstanding, the AI is built on those data sets. And if you're mm -hmm. not supposed to use those data sets for like, you know, production or commercial endeavors, then that seems like... Right? Doesn't that seem like? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think there's a lot of laws that need to catch up to this. Right. Because if you were to go in front of a judge and say, Larry looked at my website and kind of looked at my style, and now he's doing my style, what he style's not um, copyright. Right. It's, it's just not. Yeah, you know, yeah. if style was copywritten, most artists today wouldn't have a style because they took it from somebody else. For you know, sure. They added different yeah, you know, sure. modules. They added different prompts to their own thing. They bought these books that they looked through and that became part of their system. Um, and so 
really what this thing is doing is learning. So right. if you were to go in front of a judge, some old geezer up there, eh, what's what's the next docket? Hey, sir, this AI learned from my thing. And now he's kind of John like me. He'd be like, get the hell out of here, you damn kid. Get out of my courtroom. What are, you, what are you talking about? That's not against the law. <laughs> you hippie freak. Um, so there's there's things to think about, you know, with that. Um, so, I mean, I know that I've learned from other people. I've learned from you. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I, I through your stuff and it's like every, every something art- changes in me when I like something. Yeah. You know? And every artist will admit that, that they, every artist, especially like, I feel like I, I you know, I have a, I feel like I have kind of a unique perspective as well because I don't really have any skin in the game because I don't feel like the way I make most of my money is direct selling original handmade pieces of art to people yourself. that collect my work. And yeah. no, even a painting, an oil painting robot won't replace that. Collectors won't want it because no. they want something that that's the way the collector uh, artist relationship is, up. you know, so it's like, I feel like this isn't going to affect me in any way other than um, positive because I could maybe use the technology to alter my designs and get more yes. ideas and blah, blah, blah. But, um, yeah, so, so I, I do feel like I kind of don't have any skin in the game so I can afford to be less panicky about it and yeah. more objective, which I'm trying to do. Um, but, uh, but I've also worked as a as a concept artist and a creature designer, and I and I and I know that we all have books out all on our tables when we're designing monsters. We've got Bekshinsky books out, we've got nature books out, we've got anatomy books out, we've got reference of all our favorite artists on the walls. Mm-hmm. We have our favorite creature designs, and it's Mood like boards that someone else might have supplied to you. What's which that? Is ta- Mood boards, oh, absolutely. You know, someone else might yeah. have given to you, which is like collections of other people's artists that say, do it like this. References. You know, where concept artists always start. References. You know, every time yeah. a mood board of someone else totally. saying this. I like this guy's art. Do it like that. Right, that's where right. concept artists begin their work. Right. Every single time. And, and, um, and, and they all know it because <laughs> we all know it. We all do it and we've all done it. And yeah. um, so it's like, you know, that, that it's not, you know, uh, I, I guess my point, uh, the point I'm saying is that I, I have seen that in, in a produ- real production environment. So I know personally that that's the way it works mm-hmm. and I'm not saying, I'm not giving a judgment on, it, I'm just saying that's the way it works. Yeah, and, works. and yeah. And everybody, if you are an artist that is concerned with their own um, standing in the community or, or respect, or if you, if you value other artists vision and your own vision, you never steal too much to where you're ripping the artist off. You're trying to be respectful to and, and mm-hmm. yeah, you take the inspiration, but you're on. Right. Path. But there are hacks that will just out and out rip people off, other artists yeah. off. Cause and they I don't... think those guys are always obvious. Right. You know? I, I think it's really, you know, standard. Like if I hire a lot of people, like I do virtual production stuff and I hire people left and right. You know, if if I I would never hire like a prompt guy to do something because I knew they can't change it or adjust it. But I would probably if there was two people, one person, a good, really good artist that also knew AI, you know, as well. Like if it's just an, a regular guy and a guy that's good artist and also knows AI, I'm sorry, I would hire that guy, you know, because, well, you know, he, the guy that, augmented. you know, yeah, you, know? you, you you're going to hire the person who's got the most qualifications that knows more. And yeah. and the artist Obviously. the artist that has more tools at their disposal, so I, that totally makes sense. So, but um, so the yeah I I guess to you know I don't want to get <clears throat> in the weeds with this too much, but that uh that that's a, a real sticking point for a lot of artists the 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 idea that um the the as as much as it the data was legally gotten by common crawl Mm -hmm. it was illegally according to many people Mm -hmm. used for a commercial product in in mid journey and any any ai company that's charging so that that yeah and that's like a real issue and nobody really knows what to do and you know so <laughs> yeah, so far, so I kind of have a connection to the owner, Ahmad, of Stable Diffusion. I was on the beta team and I was lucky oh, enough wow. to have a couple of private conversations early on with him on Zoom. Hmm. Incredible guy. And he's really very altruistic altru- about stuff and the way his whole vision of this stuff. That's why it's open source. You know, it's he opened, you know, he does sell it and he makes money and he became like a 
billion dollar company like overnight because of the 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 possibilities right. you know, alone of all this and all the stuff that he's got planned um but i i spoke to him and he actually is very concerned about this they they have a thing that they've just started their very new version the 2.0 version allowed them to um as he says to find out like what goes into the sausage you know to really be a very very specific he didn't have that ability before and so what one of the first things that they've done is um done like connected with this have i been trained website you know, right. where you can go on there and if you're concerned about it, there's like certain, like if you can go on your images, you know, you can pick the image and say, don't use that. Oh, okay. Um, and so the very next time they build that's model, right. yeah, I knew that. Um, from that, then um, they're going to take that data from, you know, do not track me kind of stuff and take those out of the model. So I think that's a start. It's yeah. not everything for sure. You know, yeah. it's like some people have contacted me and said, well, I have like a hundred images on there. I'm not going to waste my whole day clicking all that stuff. So there really needs to be some kind of opt out system right. you know for that i think that's going to be a huge huge thing that if an artist can say just don't put my stuff in there then it won't you know yeah, and, yeah. and it, i, I it told really you. should be that yeah way, yeah know? that's if, yeah if someone doesn't want it on there it shouldn't be on there yeah Straight yeah up, zero times um and 100 really, you know, knowing how to use it and um I, I know that it doesn't need those artists unfortunately i'm sorry guys but it doesn't need it has <laughs> learned from all these masters you know the same people we learn from right you know? so it's like we are all distilled still versions of the people that came before us if we just learned if it only used the people that came before us the dead artists you know sorry dead artists that are you know no longer with us and making money you know using that stuff it would be a hundred percent fine um, I always say that like if, if an artist doesn't like if you really wanted to use an artist style, a current day artist style, you, you wouldn't need to use their name. You would just need to know their five top artists, their five right. favorite artists. If you put those into a blender. You have them. That's true. You know, so mm -hmm. they're, they're worried about their style being stolen. But a lot of times their style came pretty directly from their favorite five favorite artists. Right. It's a blend of that. And that's how it's been all the way through history. Even if you look at Michelangelo's stuff, like some of the sculptures that he did, you're like, oh, that's that's cool. But then you find out that 50 years ago, someone else made the uh, same sculpture. Oh, yeah, yeah. 50 years before that, someone made that same I remember, I... <laughs> 100 years before that, someone made it. So he was just kind of taking oh, what someone else did and refining that's it. That's the, the same way we're all doing. Yeah, that's the way it works. I remember um, thinking, you know, when I was younger, and I still think, you know, everyone thinks Geeker's amazing. I remember seeing, you know, thinking Geeker was just this singular guy that was not influenced by anybody. And I forget who it was, maybe. I might be getting the artist confused but i think it was like hans belmer or something did these this artwork that's like oh that's kind of where he started See where he got yeah that. and it's like yeah. eager just did a prompt and added that guy's <laughs> name in there and it became part you know it's like when we're new and learning we're open like we're just sponges to stuff mm -hmm. if you just see something amazing you just go for it I've found recently that my whole style came from basically Omni Magazine. If you oh, take yeah, Omni Magazine Omni. <laughs> and put it through a blender, that's my style. <laughs> Geeker, um, Sid Mead, right. you know, all those people, they're the basics. You know, if you took away those people, you would notice, like, if you went back in time and killed all those people, like, our our art would be completely different. Oh, yeah. Yours might be different. Mine would be 100% oh, yeah, yeah. different. I can, you know, I, yeah, I could, I can say uh, Geeker, Bekshinsky, Frazetta are like my yeah. top three and I could see all of their influence in all of my pieces. It's like, I, sure. I, I you that's, know, and it's not, it works. Yeah, no and one's it, building this, their style out of just nothing. Right. It just doesn't work that way. No, no. It's, a, it's a years and years of studying and looking at art and looking through art books, buying artists that you like their book. And just like, you, you feel it. Like when you see something really cool, you can feel it become a part of yourself and you can feel it when it comes out again as well. Mm -hmm. so, oh yeah. Yeah. But I don't know. I think that um, traditional artists should be actually kind of happy with this because in a way it's the, it, the end of the current way of digital artists. You know, it's a traditional artists have the, the real the foot forward now, because like you say, that real stuff, you know, that you can't copy that stuff, even with a, a robot. And I think that, that that those skills will begin to atrophy. You know, now that you can just kind of just type some stuff and get kind of some images, even if it's pieces and you put them back together. Mm -hmm. A lot of those real skills of knowing how to do the, you know, blending paint, right. um, composition yourself, all that kind of stuff. I think it will start to atrophy. And I think it'll really increase the value of actual, actual art. Yeah, that's what I feel, too, is that the, the more this that AI 
becomes a a more widely used thing that physical I mean, and this is kind of self-serving for me to say this, but you know, whatever. I, I you know, every, I'm a human. I feel like <laughs> it's going to make physical art even more valuable because <laughs> it's a, it's more of a rarity, to a physical that's, piece of art. A you know, thousand percent less people that know how to do it. You know, right. even people that might know how to do it now will stop using doing it as much, and you know, keeping up that art muscle. That you know, if you stop right. doing it for a while, you oh yeah, lose yeah, it. yeah, yeah. I can't even move my hand correctly. And, and look at look at the resurgence of vinyl albums and all kinds of things like oh, yeah. this. Even it's the fact that I'm an oil painter, I make my living as an oil painter. Oil mm -hmm. painting has been out of style since the camera. Yeah, you know how long but... ago was that? And it's like it's like you there's an there's going to be an audience for you. I, I feel like if you really want to do it, there's going to be an audience for you. And if you love something, a specific type of art, the world is so big now. And there's so many people yeah. that there's an audience for you, Agreed. you know, but, but anyway, aside from that, I mean, cause this is, I mean, I think all artists kind of agree with that, that we stand on the shoulders of giants and this, it's part of the whole thing. Part of the whole uh, process of being an artist is you learn from other artists so that's not too controversial of a statement, but um, uh, what I was going to say about the um, the copyright issue is that, you know, I, I feel like a lot of artists are pissed that they weren't asked. That's like, a, that's one thing because people are, you know. People, don't, you don't like being ripped off. Nobody likes being ripped off, no. you know. So that's that's a reasonable concern. And you're saying that the guy who owns Stable Dif Diffusion is concerned about this yes. and is looking to address it. Now, the, the I'm sure the pushback he's going to get from his users are, oh, I can't use the Greg Rutowski, or yeah. how I'm not sure how you say it, if that's how yeah. you say it. I can't do those dragons anymore. I I saw two people on Twitter the other day complaining that they couldn't do it now because they scrubbed his name from it. Yeah. And like, oh, and they were kind of joking around. Oh, I see a, yeah. I see a, 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 a market for underground AI models that have oh, wow. been trained on Greg Rutowski yeah, stuff. But, but as, as you'll find it, so it gets even more complex because there's, there's kind of two, two kind of functions, like that's kind of two separate things in the AI currently. There's the prompt based stuff. Where you can feed all your Chet Czar stuff, you know, into that main model and it and it figures it out. And you know, you could type all day long and you would never get something that is copyright, like that you could take to a judge and say, This guy stole my copyright. Right. You really couldn't. I tried over and over. You can get stuff similar, mm -hmm. but not hold upable in court at right. all. But there's another thing where I could take all of your Chet's R stuff and put it into what's called a hyper network and have it kind of figure out and then use the, the base stable diffusion model on top of that and get near exact, you know, stuff. Um, and also I can in, in put your one of your pictures directly. That's what I was going to bring up. Yeah. So there's this thing called image to image. And that seems I, like the dangerous one for as far as copyright goes. But it's exactly as dangerous as Photoshop is now. I know. I was thinking exactly. that too because it's you can scan. Thing. You can bring. I can take it. your art into Photoshop <laughs> and do that same thing. I was thinking you know, that, and that's been that conversation for twenty years now. Right. With Photoshop. Right. So this is the thing I keep saying to people: is like, if, if you break copyright with a pen, you don't sue Bic. If I break copyright with a with Photoshop, you don't sue Adobe. If I break right. copyright with AI, you don't sue the AI, you sue the person breaking your copyright. Right. And yeah. That's really what it, and then it, it, the laws haven't changed with that. If I were to try to sell something, you know, using something that was very, very similar to your thing and then try to resell it, that's a copyright offense. Now, if I were to do just a bunch of stuff that looked kind of like your style with my completely stuff, that would not hold up in court. Right. It really won't. Right. You know, it's, it's not the way copyright works they they ha they try to see what kind of damages that you took usually monetarily from you know something that somebody took like if i took one of your images and made a shirt out of it started selling it get a bunch of money boom yeah that's a case right there right but someone kind of doing something similar to your style that's not going to hold up you yeah. know and it will unfortunately yeah. yeah so okay so i, I did want to talk about that um Cause, cause uh, I was talking to my friend, Gabe uh, Leonard, you know, Gabe, I think, oh, yeah. uh, cause he's been messing with this and, and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, he, he was 
he was the one who was telling me um uh, we've been talking me and me and him and josh breckenridge we've all been uh, texting about it we're gonna we're gonna do a show i think uh all three of us talking about it at some point awesome. on the podcast just because it's just crazy um but uh uh gabe kept telling me because he was using it before i tried it really at all i'd messed with mid journey a couple times and it was so hard to get anything good i was like okay I'm, i don't have the time to deal with this what you want with yeah and so uh he was telling me you know you should mess with it you should mess with it before you kind of make a decision and um and uh and i and i do agree that once i played with it it changed my perspective my perception of it a little bit because it's not it's not super easy to get what you want now though, but I am at, see, I imagine in the future, mm -hmm. it's going to be like Photoshop and you're going to be able to make like, there's going to be parameters for everything yeah. like perspective, how big the eyes are. If it's the expression, you know, like imagine making uh custom sliders and you could just type in the slider what you want it to control the percentage of the of whatever it is anything you know how much hair is on the thing the where the lights coming from uh, already um there there is that already there's oh, there is. <laughs> yeah there's a uh, two two kind of things that you it's have crazy. so there's number one is a thing called in painting so you can produce an image and then draw a mask, say over the eyes mm -hmm. and say eyes blue in your prompt. And it'll only affect in there and blend perfectly. Oh my God. It's so crazy. You do say you mask out both eyes, say closed eyes, it goes through, blends it perfectly, adds in that new information. So they already have that. Wow. Um, there's another thing called out painting, which is amazing. So you could take any artwork, give it to it and say, give me, 100 or 300 more pixels out and it figures out what's outside of that oh my so god you can take like <laughs> all these like classical pieces of art and try to figure out you know what what goes right. well it, the, it is incredible yeah i i mean this i had this i did this with my my dystopia book it's like i wanted um to take paintings and then add what's outside of the frame to just to make it fit so i could have text on one side just for, mm -hmm. because it was cool and I did it the manual way, which is like yeah. extend the canvas, uh, take the image, flip it maybe, clone. and then try and and then do clone mm -hmm. stamp and yeah. the healing tool. And it's like uh, that's that's t I think, and it sounds like you think this too. It's like these are the things that it's are going to be used more than anything. Stuff like oh, yeah. that, rather oh, than yeah. like, I think people are freaking out because it's so good at. Well, it's so good at making art with very little effort, but the real power in it is going to be assisting artists that driven. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, tools. that's what it, it's, that's it's what excites me about it anyway. And oh it, man. You know, it's the, the, there's like a treasure trove of true of tools out there that you, people just don't understand that's coming. Like you can give it say an animation or a film and say, make this 200 times slower and the AI will draw all those in between frames for you. Wow. You can give it an old photograph that's all cut up and, you know, ripped and it'll make it brand new for you automatically. Uh, you can take, yeah. I mean, it's just like one thing after another, you take a black and white image and make it colored. Right. You know, it's, it's just like you all of a sudden have a whole entire room of people that artists helping you with it. Right. So it's kind of a new paradigm with all this stuff. The way I see it, it's, it's all of a sudden you have, you're an art director and you have a whole room of people to help you take things further. And I think that's really what's going to happen is we're going to go beyond, you know, just trying to make a flat image. And then all of a sudden we're going to start making worlds, entire worlds. Right. Instead. It's going to drive us a little bit further. You know, it's, it's, it's the kind of thing where you're augmented now and you have a lot of help. Like if you're, if you're doing like a digital painting of a huge crowd, you could spend your entire day in there, like drawing that crowd you know, and it just wait, nobody has time for that anymore. You know, you got too many things to do. And now you can just say this area right here, give me a crowd that's like this. And you have that crowd, right? You know, it's, it's helpers that are in there that are, that are joining in to take your art further, I think. Right. You know, and then once, once we hit 3d stuff, that's what's next on all of this is the yeah. making 3D models. That's what I'm excited and about. <laughs> then all of a sudden you'll, you know, a couple of years from now, you'll be able to type out a world and then it'll create this like VR world that you could walk through. That's what, yeah. That stuff in there. That's what you I'm know, a lot of cool, exciting yeah. stuff. that's that's on the horizon. And right now it's like, I'm excited about this stuff because it's a time of pioneering. 
you know, back when I first started doing 3D, nobody knew what the hell it was. It wasn't until Toy Story came out that I could say, it's like Toy Story, you know? <laughs> so I'd say, I do 3D work. They're like, oh, it's cool. Red, blue glasses. They're like, no, nah, it's not like that. <laughs> and I had to explain, you know, what 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 the hell I was talking about. And then all of a sudden there was stuff that, that let people know. Um, you know, so it's, it's like people have to get, you know, used to it and understand, you know, what what it can do. And, you know, we'll, we'll go from there. I, I suppose that people that, you know, you say it's like having helpers, artistic helpers. Now, I think about myself and it's like, yeah, I could never afford to hire a bunch of people to help me. And so for me, it would be amazing. Uh, but I think what people that normally the people that are the helpers that work at a game company that do all the, that do the bat, do the, yeah. the crowd scenes, they're mm-hmm. worried about losing their jobs, you know, and that's like a legitimate concern, you know? Oh yeah. Th- there is zero doubt in my life, in my mind that jobs will be lost. Right. But there's zero doubt in my mind that new jobs will spring up, you know, and that's kind of how the world's always worked. You know, it's like artists, using an artist to actually you know help you do it is much better than just trying to randomly get something you'll you'll people at first will try that like i'm not gonna hire an artist i'm just gonna do this prompt and they're gonna find this very limiting you know it's like okay i still need to hire an artist that that knows this stuff to do that right Um, that was kind of my feeling that i got after messing with it for a little bit it was like they're still gonna need artists they will even even no matter yeah. even if it gets super super advanced, it seems like they're still going to need to be someone with an eye oh, that yeah. knows oh, when God. something's off. Because a lot of these guys at the, or guys or whatever, a lot of these, a lot of executives when I was working in the film industry, they didn't even know they were like kind of making decisions about things that you were making for them. They didn't even know what looked good. Like yeah. they couldn't see what exactly. looked good versus what looked People bad. Can. And yeah. you have to tell them, no, this one's bad because you don't understand. Mm-hmm. This one's bad. This is the one that looks good. And yeah. and they couldn't see it. So it, it seems like that there will always be value for that. Uh, no doubt in my you mind. Know? But, you know, I, I no, think, sorry, ahead. the, the uh, I think there's even like a greater discussion about this, like For some reason, art was the first thing that AI came out with. Never would have thought that in a million years. I know, right? It's like, ah, at least I do art. I'll never have to worry about the AI. (laughs) And of course, that's the very first thing and it learns and gets extremely good at it. But there is other stuff on the horizon that's going to affect every other job out there. Everything. Anything. If you're a writer, programmer, um, I don't know if you've messed with that chat GPT stuff at all. No, but I've seen it. My goodness, it can type out full code. You can tell it, it, you know, give me a program that does this, instantly writes it out. And you can say, okay, I don't like this, like in plain language. And okay, it changes it and you have a fully running program. You know, so artists are scared. Programmers should be doubly scared. Lawyers, you know, know, it's like contract lawyers, doctors. Like songwriters, I don't know if you've seen any of this stuff. It's like, write me a song about taxes by Cardi B, and it writes out a freaking good, perfect rap. <laughs> you know, like instantly, right. yeah, songwriters, yeah. Like everybody's going to be affected by this soon. Um, for some reason, it was art that was the- I know, it's so the, weird. <laughs> the canary in the coal mine, <laughs> you know. And so, you know, I've spent a lot of time with this over, la- over this last year talking to people about it, my experiences and helping them to understand it, because I don't- I don't think starting out like really hating it and and putting your foot down and crossing your arms and going, no, nah, I'm not going to touch this stuff. I don't think that's a way into the future right now. It's, it's just unfortunately not. It's a dead end. Yeah. You know, try to find ethical ways to use these tools, augment yourself because your competition most certainly will be. Right. And you don't want to lose a job to some prompt jock, 13 year old prompt jockey, you know, sitting there that's really studied this stuff and figured it out. It's better to use all of your art skills, take that power of your art skills, which will just be amplified, you know, by all this new technology and, you know, go forward that way, you know, right. at least find it that way. Yeah. I, and that doesn't mean that you don't stand up for um, uh, legislation and laws yeah, that happen. You know, it really does. You, I, the conversation I fe- just started. You know, we're trying to figure this out. It needs to get to a point where everybody's happy and kind of understands, you know, really how it works. Right. It's not just a thing that steals your artwork and pastes it back on, you know, to Joe Devian art. You know, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's real, it's something that could help you think it's more of a collaboration, kind of a, a new kind of ideology 
it's that you kind of have to embrace, you know, you're working with somebody and you're working with, uh, so I've like worked with other artists and it's kind of nice. Like you work with them and they take you places that you wouldn't have gone before. Right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That and that is really very much the same as working with the AI, hmm. you know, they work without any fear or self, you know, worry like, Oh, right. I don't want to do this because that'll, I'll be embarrassed or I don't want to do this. It just does, <laughs> you know, a million different things. And even if you have a really stable, good idea, you go, Holy crap, that's actually a really good right, idea. Right. And you grab that into your system and, you know, reapply that. And yeah, in my opinion, I've always come up with something better, just like collaborating with, with, I say them, you know, but yeah, <laughs> um, I, I kind of um, anthrop amorphosized them, yeah <laughs> um, you know a little bit you know and it's people tell you know say hey how come you're always sticking up for the ai and stuff you know it's i'm like oh actually i'm not i hate those little buggers i put little shot collars on them and i make them work 24 7 you know, for me because i know eventually they're gonna you know take over the world so right now i'm abusing the hell out of them and make them just fucking freaking do all sorts of artwork for me all you know times of the day um so that's kind of how i think about it it's like it's they I think they're very, very helpful and they're getting more helpful every single day. And I, to me, it's like they they take me places that I've never gone before. And I, I appreciate it. And right now is a time for pioneering like never before. Like when I very first started, I was going to say before is that nobody knew what the hell to all this 3D stuff or where it could go. And that excited the hell out of me. And I did, you know, a lot of stuff, you know, early on that nobody had done before. Mm -hmm. I really, that was my high point of my career. The very first few years I was doing stuff that nobody's ever oh, yeah. seen. Or, and that was before the internet. So, you know, I, I got a chance to just really just do it the way I did. And so it kind of dropped off from there after I got kind of bored, you know, it was, oh, the same crap all over and over again. And then all of a sudden this AI stuff hit and my interest in art shot right back up because it's like, nobody knows what these guys are capable of. Right. You know, really? So it's, yeah. and because I'm an artist and I know that I'm driving them, they're not driving me. It leads me like a, a, a weird, like buzzing excitement of like, never that you can do stuff that nobody has ever thought of or ever done before right now and that, right. that's going to go away in a couple of years so right now is a time that's exciting to me because there's the world's my oyster you know in a lot of ways like it's i'm going to do things that i know that hasn't been thought of before right in ways that nobody thought possible you know even the ai that by itself could never do you know right. it's, it, it's our connection it's it's our team that has made that possible you know to do new things and go new places Okay. I I want I I'm trying to go through some questions. I want to make sure we cover everything that I can think of on this. Uh I had one um friend of mine who's very reluctant to try it out, who's a brilliant artist that you know. I'll tell you off air. Uh I don't know if he wants me to if he wants me to yeah, mention his name or not. Um his concern is <clears throat> that art making He's a fine art guy. Art making is like a, which is, I agree with him on this. It's a relationship with this creative spark or this muse thing. And you, it's like this, you know how it is when you make a piece of art, it's like, you're kind of following this thing. Mm -hmm. You have an idea, but then it's giving you ideas as you lay things down. And it's mm -hmm. like this weird interplay between you and this unseen energy. And he's concerned that, that part of it is gone. But I was thinking that the AI is that thing. Is that, to me, it seems like you could use the AI in the same way. And I just was wondering your thoughts on it. You can use the same AI in the same way as you would be like sketching. Okay. So you start sketching a drawing. When I, when I sketch, I just kind of doodle and mess around until I see something I like. Mm -hmm. And then I go, Oh, I'm going to take this area and I'm going to develop it further. And then I start developing it further. And then I'm like, oh, okay, I like this. I'm going to compose it. I'm going to put a composition around it. And this will make a cool painting. And then I figure out the colors and this and that. And it seems like the AI process is similar. Like first you start with some basic idea and you keep making iterations until you see something that you go, oh, that's cool. Yeah. That inspires mm -hmm. me. Now I want to develop it further in the same way you would develop your sketch. Yeah. And you kind of keep going that way. And then you get your thing and you're like, okay, if I crop it like this, it's going to make a cool image. Uh, let me work on the color and blah, 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 blah. Right. So that yeah. that's, it seemed to, seems to me like it could still function in the same way 
it were that that magical creative interplay between this invisible force and you as an artist is yeah. and do you well, feel that that's true or is there well, like a separation is there like a weird mechanical thing in between you and the art making because it's artificial intelligence or well i, I think that i kind of give it the, the base information you know that comes from me and then to see what how close it can get and i choose the one that's closest to what i was thinking before but um, first off, I can make a distinction between like fine art and production art. So fine art, there's literally no reason that anything should change. Literally, no. You, you don't have just turn the computer off. Just do your art. Yeah, you don't have to use it. You've always done it before. <laughs> no one's forcing you to do this. That's true. But what I will, but production, production definitely will change to AI because production's always been about getting your stuff done on time, mm -hmm. making the client happy. Now, if you seeing variations, a little team here, that's of course, that's going to happen because it's always been about being faster. You mm -hmm. know? But as you get faster, they just want you to do more, you know, so you're right. still getting a job and you're doing all sorts of stuff. It's just going to be doing more. Um, but as far as like a, a digital artist you, using it, I think it would be kind of crazy not to use it, you know, because it you can even give it a final image and say, make variations of this. Right. You know, make the red sky, you know, make, make yeah. this with clouds, make this person, you know, I put, I feed in all my old digital art and completely change it. You know, I'd take one image of a character and split it up into a thousand different little characters that are flying around. Mm -hmm. and you can do that now because of this. Um, but I, I do think that's a artist choice, you know, real, whether or not they want to use it, but I think the choice would be silly not to. Right. But, um, you know, I think uh, I made a kind of prediction when this first started. I, I said that um, traditional artists will eventually create some kind of symbol that says I, I didn't use any kind of AI right. <laughs> to their painting, you know, like this is, you know, homegrown, hormone free, right. <laughs> ethical artwork that I didn't touch AI, you know, for it. But, you know, I'm not sure people will really care about that as much. You know, people yeah. like the general population, they want to see a cool image, you know, right. and if the image is cool, you know, that's they're not going to say, oh, OK, you, well, you spent more time. To, this was harder for you. You made your made it harder for yourself to design this. Right. It took took you longer than it would have if you did use the AI, you know, so it's like I don't, I'm not sure if like that is going to be as important anymore. It's like you, you're the the thing that you're bragging about is that it took you longer, you know, really that right. instead of just having automatically created, you took the hard, you know, the long, right. Hard, right. And some people, hard, and know? some people, yeah. And some people do that. Sp yeah, you should. You some, know, some special. people like, some people like to stretch their own canvases. They like to oh, do yeah. all of it. And it's like, that's their thing. And it's like, that's cool. Yeah. You know? So for sure. It's, and it just goes that, that whole thing goes back to the artist purity thing. Mm -hmm. You know, back when I started, I got a lot of crap for digital art because I, people said straight to my face, like, that's not real art. It's called CGI computer generated images. Like, yeah. Your name isn't included in any of those things. You know, your computer is doing almost everything for you. And which is strange because this all of a sudden, 25 years later, people are telling me that again. You right know, that, everything for you i know i i you know, it's almost exactly i feel like deja vu of <laughs> everything that i went through those first five or six years back in the early 90s yeah you know? I, so I all think, of a sudden what's new what's old is new again and uh, yeah i i think it's you know i there's it's particularly particularly ironic to see digital artists getting super pissed about it because yeah, i remember when digital art became a thing and i know a bunch of traditional illustrators that lost work because of it they oh, yeah. either got with they, they got into photoshop or they or they got left behind photographers also oh, yeah. you know and they were the guys that were taking over for for mm -hmm. they were taking taking the jobs away from yeah. from the traditional <laughs> people and it's like Okay, you I, gotta yeah. see that a little bit at least. <laughs> it, it hurts. It hurts me a little bit because I digital art is like, oh, this digit, this AI stuff's gonna take my job. I'm like, well, are are you at all feel guilty about the jobs that you took when you started digital art? Because that's what happened. Yeah. Uh, like the, I remember at very first, like when went back when like again Toy Story came out. Basically, Disney said, okay, from now on, we're gonna do this differently. If you want to maintain your employment, start learning the computer. And at that point, there was a choice to make. Like, okay, no, I'm gonna draw it in the sand. I'm gonna do it the same way I've always done. 
they were no longer employed. I'm not sure what they did. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe some of them a few years later came back to that. You know, they said 3D is completely lifeless. It'll never do well. You know, right. but if, if you look at that Love, Death and, and Robots oh, show, amazing. I think it took 20 years, but yeah. that proved that there was some definite life in oh, 3D yeah. animation. Um, it just needed to get to that point. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it's like that you could either choose to be out of work now, you know, like stomp your foot and say, no, I'm not touching that stuff. But really, the world is changing right now. That's it's as easy as I can say it, but it's it's almost as if when the Internet started right now, it's not, it's probably bigger than when the Internet started. Yeah, I, it's a whole it's literally an artificial life form that remembers everything that it learns and everything that it learns works together. You know, right. it takes all this information and puts it together into kind of one knowledge, which you can't compete with that. Right. You know, it's it happened, you know, perhaps it's going to be the end of the world. I don't know. You know, it's like, <laughs> there, you know, there's the whole Ray Kurzweil thing. You know, it's like the where he's talking about the, the singularity, the singularity and everything's happening all where, at the same time. And that's exactly he, he's been exactly correct. Strangely enough, like all the same thing, same thing with Moore's laws, like the computer power doubling every 18 months. It's been consistent and he's been dead on. And oh, yeah. Said, Basically, you know, basically he's saying computer stuff will happen so fast that you'll more or less humans will need to be augmented in order to keep up with that all the wow. information. And that's that first bit of this. So right now art is getting augmented in order to keep up with the entire world's information about art and close in a package. Now you have to grab onto that the same way you, you do a search on the Internet. You know, you kind of do a, a visual search, you know, using this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, he he predicted it was like uh 2047 was the singularity you know and wow. i think he even kind of moved that forward a little bit wow uh, so you know maybe all this stuff will be the end of the world but i i have to say i'm going to enjoy the end of world like using this cool <laughs> image generation stuff i feel like somebody made a wish say anybody in the world now can make images it's like you'd be crazy not to jump in there and try it because right. literally it is fun as hell. I'm sorry. I've been an artist my entire life, but I still enjoy seeing what happens when you try to explain something to the AI. So you'll notice little bits of changes of words, like really affect it differently, little added things. I mean, nobody really knew, like knows what this thing can do. You find out later that you could add like camera information to it, right. lens information, all this stuff. And it changes it from that, you know, that lens fisheye all right. of a sudden it becomes fisheye lens hdri all of a sudden something different happens yeah, it can do like things little it, magic yeah. potions that you put in there that you know different things could happen and nobody really knows so. yeah it could do things that haven't even no one's even thought of yet that's yeah. the that's, that's the crazy that's thing the exciting it. part yeah. to me you know we were kind of on a path i would say this path of digital art you know it's all of a sudden you know like for being a 3d artist it used to take me like, like a week to to rig a character now there's auto riggers you press a button it'll automatically rig uh, it. and who's no one, no one said oh <laughs> dang those dang i'm not going to use this because it's going to put riggers out of work right everyone was like i like, hate rigging okay, this is great that <laughs> took me a long freaking time now it's fast no, right. but nobody really complained about that yeah, yeah. But it was too big of a leap now what happened is all of a sudden we went from incremental things you know, real-time ray tracing real-time global illumination um you know, all that stuff that's kind of been building up, you know, that's, that's happening. Um, but then all of a sudden it went like this, yeah. <laughs> now it's, you just type something, you get the entire done image. So of course people are going to freak out, but it's yeah, like, yeah. It's, the sooner I think people kind of, you know, understand, you know, the limitations of it and kind of get past the, the, you know, with the help of the companies like that will help us out with the copyright stuff. You know, I've been really trying to prove to artists anytime an artist tells me, oh, okay, this thing's stolen my work. I go through and I do all, every prompt of, that I could possibly think of that would get me that image. And I show them, okay, this is what you get when I'm trying to explain this. And it's never anywhere near that, yeah. you know? Wow. So it's like, I'm trying to really show people with real examples of, okay, this really isn't copyright infringement in a way i know he looked at your artwork you know he he, he kind of he most likely stole your style um which sucks you know obviously right, right. But it's like if you have access to the entire world's artists would you be prompting like modern day artists or like the the masters like to me i i would go towards the masters right. myself oh yeah you know yeah. And nothing against modern day artists but it's like like we were saying before they're a distillation of the artists all before them so i might as well take the original you know right. and use that 
So we we need to like find a, a, a solution for this that everybody's happy that they really understand that it's not stealing your artwork. You know, it could take your style for sure. You know, mm -hmm. and that Photoshop, same, you know, same argument with that. It's been able to do that forever. But I don't know. I, I choose to look at this positively myself. And I know it, it's it's kind of hard to do. You know, I just bought a house recently and I started thinking, man, what if this takes my job? I'll, that, I'll have it okay. all over my face. That, you know, basically, what... it's like, what if I'm like, like, Roo, yeah, AI, let's go AI. And then like, oh. This is what this is one of the questions I had actually that someone asked on on Twitter. Uh, cause I, I asked people if you have any questions, I'm gonna talk to Meats about this. What uh uh how uh, have you thought about? Because I know coders are saying we're going to put ourselves, we're putting ourselves out of a job by coding this AI right now. Mm -hmm. Like they're saying that, and and Cats the, out of the bag on that one. Yeah, yeah. So um, you can't take the piss out of the pool, as they say. <laughs> have you, I've never heard that one. That's a good one. <laughs> I stole that. <laughs> have, so have you thought about? Uh, do you think it's going to take your your job away eventually? All right. Well. So far, I personally don't, you know, so far I've been paid by Pussifer to make an AI music video out of that. Mm -hmm. I've been sent to Portugal to talk about it. I've got several AI jobs that were offered to me recently. So to me, I, I have to say unequivocally, no, you know, as long as maybe, maybe there is going to be some kind of shakeout, you know, for artists. But I know the ones that are going to remain are the ones that are going to harness this power. Hmm. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm I'm future proofing myself. Wow. You know, I, I know all about like standard, like drawing art, all that kind of stuff. I know every bit of digital art, 3D sculpting, 3D things. I know Unreal up and down, mm -hmm. you know, so I'm learning all these things that keep me employed. And that's kind of what I found with digital art is you never can stop learning. Right. You really can't. It's changed consistently. Like since I started, there's never been a day where I'm like, okay, Ah, that was fun, but I learned it all. Like, right as I say that, all of a sudden, ping, new program comes out. The substance painter, all of a sudden, right. will be able to do these materials automatically for you. So, oh, new thing to learn. You know, now you can just automatically make 3D scans with your iPhone. You know, oh, new thing to learn. But the more you learn, the more future-proof you're going to be. So mm -hmm. it's very, very important to keep up with this stuff for that very reason. That's right. what's going to make you, you know, a, a standout. You know, but I really do feel like the people that are that are stopping right now and saying ah ai is just thievery all ai is thievery i think those people are going to give them a self um realization real, uh the it's going to happen to them because self-fulfilled so, pro prophecy thank you, thank you. That, <laughs> that got stuck in my brain somewhere um self-fulfilling prophecy thank you and i really do believe that you know it's right. it's why why would you stop now you know especially when it, it's this huge amount of powerful tools that are there to help you do what you do. Yeah. And on one, you know, it's funny because if you just for a minute go, okay, I'm going to take all my preconceived notions about how bad this is for my career and consider all the positives that it could give me, you know, like how can it assist me? That's weird. I'm getting a delay. I'm hearing you on the, I'm hearing my voice. Okay. It's better now. Oh, uh, <laughs> If you, you know, if you take aside the, the potential negatives and just look at like, okay, how could I benefit from this? You know, I think people would be surprised, but that, but, but it, and, and excited about their future as an artist, if they, mm -hmm. but the thing is you have to kind of like, uh, it was like, it was like NFTs when I got, I started, I did NFTs for a while until the market completely took a shit and now i'm just kind of not really i'm just waiting for there to be something to to do there because the market's so bad now but in the beginning it was like it was hard to explain to someone unless they were in that space and trying it out and seeing how it worked it's yeah. hard to have a clear perspective of it until you've at least played with it a little bit and For once sure. you once you play with it, you start going, oh, I could do this. Oh, I could do this. Exactly. Oh, I could do this. So the NFTs had that same kind of um, shadow over them before. And, the, and the, their yep. sh the NFT shadow was that it required the use of energy to be produced using your video card to run the stuff right. that would actually, you know, create those Ethereums. And so it's like run. It's like the running all Ethereums like is 
producing as much electricity as the state of Florida. Right, right, like right. So people were like hardlined against NFTs. No, that's against the environment, you know, all that kind of stuff. But then Ethereum changed their proof of stake, the way that they go about that. Yep. And they took away that power requirement. So I think that NFTs kind of died a little bit almost because of that. You know, that's like, okay, there's no, nothing really that is propping these up. You know, because usually before it was like you'd have to spend a whole bunch of money on electricity right. and that's what turned the thing and made that valuable. Mm -hmm. And they took that away. And in my opinion, when they took that away, it should have taken most people's negative opinions about it away. Right. And it's the same kind of thing with AI is that once you can really trust these companies that they're that you're not stealing from artists, um, I think that it'll help you know, people to feel a little bit better to jump in. And I, I really, really hope that that happens, like the, that they can find a way to to really be ambassadors to to say, wait a minute, this isn't how it really works. Um, right. You know, so it's just education, really, I think. Um, and, and guaranteed, no matter what I say, like the people that are really against it, doesn't matter what you say, they're going to be against it no matter what. Oh, yeah, you know, for that's, sure. That's the other thing that I found, like no matter how many, you know, things I cite or links I give or it's like still like, OK, well, because, you know, to me that really the artists, they, they say all these things about. Um, copyright and all these things, but really what they're scared about is it stealing their job. You yeah. know, so they put out all these other things. And it doesn't matter how many of those straw men you knock down. It comes down to really the, the yeah. real fear is that they're going to lose their job, you know? So they're totally. like, oh, I'm going to lose my job. So this, this is my ammunition to try right. to stop it. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Cause there's other, there's other, I, I've thought that too. Like I thought even like, well, you know, you could really say that capitalism is to blame for 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 uh the 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 fact that you have to worry about losing your job your job in the first place you know and that and that you don't have health insurance i mean you can get political and be like you know there's legitimate fears for losing your job because if you don't have health insurance they'll fucking let you die in america they'll let you die oh, yeah. so oh, yeah. it's like so there's you know there's legitimate concerns there so you could legitimate. you know so you could like follow the chain there and go like okay Cause that's why I'm, I'm in, and I know you are too. I'm uh, uh, sympathetic to people that are, are worried about losing their jobs because there's, sure. there's a serious, like you said, you just bought a house. There's like, you know, and the, and the, and, and there's no safety net anymore really mm -hmm. for people. So I get it. But, um, but you know, how far down the chain do you want to go? Cause you could, you really, I was thinking it's like, this is kind of more of a capitalism problem than anything else. The fact yeah. that, that we're, we have to, use our talents in order to earn a living so that we could survive in this world, whatever. That's like a completely different yeah. <laughs> subject, but I'm just saying it's like, you can always kind of like extrapolate. And I agree. I think that, um, uh, I agree. It's like, even though someone might not necessarily, uh, like the idea of data being collected without their permission, even though they gave permission when they opted, you know, with, when they, put their stuff on the website mm -hmm. until it like affects them to where they're going to lose their job. They're not going to care that much. They're not going to get pissed and be yelling at each other over it. They're not going to be like yeah. screaming, screaming about it and stuff. So um, I think one thing I wanted to say too, is like, man, I wish that. And also people, people are very rightly suspicious of big companies that are valued at a billion dollars. You know, that's like a legitimate concern. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it's easy to not trust a company like that. And, and, you know, hearing you say that, you know, you've talked to this owner of Stable Diffusion and it's like he's he's a legit he guy. He really does care. It's a complex issue, though, yeah. because in his mind, he's like, I I bought these images from a the, legal, the legal source or used it legally. You know, it's signed, mm -hmm. delivered a billion dollar company just literally isn't going to just risk it and roll the dice on something that their lawyers already haven't all figured out. Right. Yeah, yeah. I start, I start there just with kind of a reality base of, you know, they're not going to just steal images and use those images over and over again in that kind of way. You know, right. you know that lawyers have gone well, over it to it, find. Yeah. Yeah. And even I was a uh, uh, part of that Steven Zapata live streams he was talking about how uh there could be a real issue if unless the until the copyright thing is figured out there, there could be an issue with 
uh, design or uh, uh, video game companies or film companies using AI to create characters because the, if if there is a copyright issue, they're not going to be comfortable using the AI because mm-hmm. they're trying to make stuff that they can market and copyright mm-hmm. themselves. And if they mm-hmm. and if they don't truly own, because that's the thing, it's like I know that there's an issue of ownership of the imagery as well. Like, do you own the copyright of the? It, that's kind of gone back and forth, but I believe that Mid Journey has given you copyright and that allowed you to use that kind of stuff. Um, Stable Diffusion Diffusion's open source, and I think there's like a hidden like a uh, thing in there, like a stamp that's like in, in like Stable Diffusion stuff. Oh, wow. I personally use it as like an asset creator, and I take all those assets and put it together. So I, right. I, am, I I am completely you know, and usually it's the, using the image to image thing, which starts with a photo, one of my photographs or right. one of my three pieces are, and so I start with that base, and then it adds stuff on top. So I'm quite certain that. Um, you know, it's, it's pretty, that I would be safe. Right. Um, not that I've tried to sell any of my art stuff, you know, AI stuff yet. Like all my things so far is just training, learning, you know, to me figuring it out. I'm yeah. not trying to be like, here's my bunch of my images that are mine and I'm going right. to sell these. Right. That's not where I'm at personally. Right. With yeah. That, yeah. That. So, so he, he was saying on the stream, like when you, even artists that do photo bashing for coming up with designs, they have the company as their lawyer, look at the artwork to mm-hmm. make sure that those aren't that those are like royalty free images and stuff. So that's yeah. another well, you know what I do and I, I tell everybody to do this. You know, if you're worried about copyright stuff, there's a wonderful thing with Google that has it's Google Images. If mm-hmm. you're ever worried about that something's might be breaking copyright, I run it through almost everything I do, you know. I go through, and I've never found a match. Mm-hmm. Not one time. Because I know how it works, it's a blend of all these things to put together, you know, the same way artists do, you Mm -hmm. know, take all like the best pieces and kind of put it together. I've tried over and over with that Google image search, never found anything close. And and I invite everybody to do that. In fact, that's a good way to fight against it. If you say this is breaking copyright, run it through a Google thing, because if you're going to go to court, you're going to need to show them specifically what it's copying. You can't say hey, this guy learned from me. It's kind of like it. And they're going, okay, cool. Next. Right. You know, that, that's not copyright. That's, right. That isn't, unfortunately. Right. Um, you know, it's a blend of all these things. And yeah. so I've done so many of those Google image searches. And I want to be, I want to make sure I'm not putting out something that somebody can go, hey, that's my image. Because that would kill me inside. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, it really would. And so it's, I, I make sure that it's, you know, not something that was been taken because that's not how I want to be. I want to make something new at all times. Oh that's yeah, yeah, I same here. It's something different. Yeah, you know? yeah. I don't want to do something that somebody else has done, but I want to take my ideas and work with this thing, and create something new. Right. So I do check that a lot, and I think that everybody should do that. If I you do ever feel like there's a copyright. Yeah, I do that when I make paintings. Like if I come up with an idea that seems mm-hmm. like someone must have done this painting before, I'll I'll I'll, I'll Google it <laughs> to make sure that you know. Yeah. Like, uh, robot Jesus on a cross or something. It's like, if I get an idea like that, that's very specific, I'll mm-hmm. be like, someone must have done this. And then if they haven't, then I'll make the painting. If they have, it's like, oh yeah, someone did it. And I just, I, you know, didn't, didn't <laughs> exactly. see it. Like uh, so many of the AI things that come out, I'm like, that is so good. And there's thought that went into that, that somebody must have, a human must have thought about that. And I right. look and it's like, you know, this stuff was taken from the web. You know, so we know that it'll be findable. It was taken from the web. Right. Originally. You know, this isn't on some island. So if true, true. Google image search does a very, very good job. Try it with like, you could take like the Mona Lisa and kind of put it into a Photoshop thing and blend it a little bit. It still can find it right, every right. time. You know, it, it does a great, great job. That's Yeah, um, that's a good point. Let me me mention another thing too. I see a lot of like memes saying, Hey, I I saw like a foot, like a version of the Shutterstock logo on top of the thing that it made. And that is proof that it stole it. But actually, you know, really what it is, is that when um, an AI looks at thousands and millions and millions of images, especially stock photos, it makes connections between stuff and it, it starts to think, okay, a photo is something, but it has these words over it. Right. And that's what a photo <laughs> is. And it's literally, it's the same thing with paintings. It Like when you do a painting thing, some when you put in like oil painting, sometimes you'll see a little bit of signature. It's like somebody's signature. But really what that is, is the AI associating a painting with ah. having a signature on it. And it and it puts it on top of that. And Interesting. It that. To me, it, it does that to me 
a whole bunch of times that with the 2.0 version, there was some bug on it. So even stuff that I was putting my own artwork and having it change it slightly, it would put those over the top. So I knew a thousand percent that that didn't come from a shutter stop because right. I just barely made it, you know, and I know, and I know I didn't upload it, but that's really just so people know that's where that comes from. Interesting. It's a, AI thinking that's what it is, you know? Yeah. So if it's a drawing, it might have like a, you know, a pencil, and you'll see like a little bit of gibberish because it's going, oh, you want a drawing? And I know that drawings have a thing. Right. Right? So it puts some stuff like, hey, how's that? So it's you not. Know, it's, really, that's what it is. Yeah. It's not because it's sampling the exactly. image. It's because it thinks that if it's a painting, it has a signature exactly. because most and paintings have signatures. That's that's an, that's another point on this that I really want to reiterate. It's actually impossible to copy um things directly people think it's just copying and pasting but because i have it locally on my machine right there um i can disconnect it from the internet basically those models are like say eight gigs five to eight gigs huh. and it, it, it that's it you can put those models in there disconnect it from the internet and it still completely works meaning wow. that all its knowledge base is in eight gigs okay so it's really interesting how this actually all works they put like say um 900 million images together like the, this thing and it puts it in with code into what in all these machines it's so like stable diffusion they spent like millions and millions of dollars buying like a football field worth of these huge computers so you put it into this kind of like what they call the black box and let it figure it out for like a simulated simulated 250 years oh, it's just some things about these things and i say simulated because every single computer node works together to to lessen that time if wow. it was just one it would take 250 years but because of all these multi-processors and all these huge computers it sits and thinks about this stuff and it's they call the black box and the most interesting thing about it is that nobody knows how they make their decisions or what happens in that black box they don't know how it works oh, but when it crazy. comes out you know the door opens and those little ai guys like see light and they're like hey, here's this you know that that <laughs> model is what comes out is like all those millions and millions but like terabytes of data that we could never even think about like harnessing it takes that all down and puts it into like this thing called a training model like a trained model you right. know what it is and that model is very very small yeah and so that, that's a neural cool. network could take and look at that model and it translates it using this thing called diffusion so what it does is it puts out all these like dots and it takes your prompt and says can i can i see that what what I know about, okay, say you, I want an apple on a table. And so it puts all these dots and it squints its eyes and it starts to put what it knows into that form. So there's always a randomization about that. And so it puts increasingly all these different steps. The next steps, it puts more, more dots in that kind of more towards, you know, what it's looking for. And it does all these like randomizations of those dots, you know, basically, and it comes up with this thing. Um, I remember when I was a youngster, I, um, I barely graduated high school, but there was like a one class that I took that the, the teacher said, if you ever can't think of how to draw something, draw all these like squiggles and then kind of squint at it and you'll start to see things mm -hmm. and then you can draw and like, oh, okay, that's it. And that's more or less what the AI does, wow. you know, to figure this stuff out. And that's wow. why it'll never really break copyright because it's randomized, you know, all these different things, depending on how that dot system works and that it can figure out that stuff it puts it together and the way it blends all these things that it knows into this new piece that's crazy i, I always thought that was really kind of interesting yeah it's, yeah it's like what because scientists literally do not know what happens in that black box that's insane yeah um, that's insane how they figured out or why they do what they do or yeah how they figured out, and they also don't know what it's capable of as of yet yeah, it's that's just, those two things are that's my <laughs> not my scary point. Like I'm sitting there like plotting, you know, I'm gonna start with art and then I'm right. gonna <laughs> take over these bastards. I was thinking, you know, so someone should because since this is such a complex issue, um uh, re regarding, you know, all the issues we're talking about, I was thinking someone should go into uh the what's the chat called? Chat chat GPT G chat GPT T? yeah chat gpt and ask it how to solve this issue of copyright infringement and yeah. in ai and yeah. it'll probably tell you what you'd have to do to fix this 
Yeah. A- after this, I recommend you try out that okay. chat GPT thing. It's, yeah, I know. It's even I've... more concerning than the art one. In my <laughs> I know. It really, you can, I know. You can, you, can, you can ask it something and, and at first you think, okay, I just took that off the internet. But then you say, give me a little bit more information about this and it'll expand on that. Yeah, that's what. You know? And, and I... you'll ask it very like detailed questions. There's this picture that always affected me. It's like knowing that it, this is true AI. There's this picture of, of, of Obama with somebody standing on the scale. Somebody's standing on a scale and Obama's behind him and he's got his foot on the scale. And um, there's all these mirrors around there, you know, which reflect the people that are in the room. So if you were just a simple computer, you would think there was like 12 people in the room because there's a reflection of the guy and all that Mm -hmm. kind of stuff. You say, how many people are in the room? It'll tell you the exact amount, not the reflections, the perfect reflections. You also say, what is Obama doing? And he's like, he's got his foot on the scale to, to increase the thing. And it's like, why is that funny? And it'll tell you why that's funny. Whoa. Um, and really deep, like it's it's insane yeah. like, what this thing can do. And it, it's it's almost like has consciousness. Yeah, I, I saw in a way, but it doesn't. Yeah, but. I saw a guy uh, a, a YouTube video from four days ago. Some guy posted it and it was a coder, and he was just freaking out. It was like he did this quick video and he was like, This is scary, you know. Done. It's <laughs> Not just, he was like, yeah, we're done. He's like, in five years, there's not going to be any coding jobs. But he also was like, okay, tell me how to do this kind of surgery. This oh, complicated that yeah. Exact video. Yeah. I watched that. Yeah. yeah. So he, he was saying, doctors are over, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it so. was like, it was telling how to do this uh, complicated surgery. Yeah. Well, first it says, don't do it. You'll die. Yeah. You know? <laughs> That's what it first. And then he's like, all right, okay. If this is apocalyptic world, there's no doctors around. Would I be able to do the surgery? No, don't do it. You'll die. <laughs> you know, basically. And then yeah. uh, if I just had to do it, I was going to die anyway. Then it tried to, it, right. then it started to kind of explain, all right, well, probably best to put your head back on this thing and, you know, work on, I don't know. Right. But it was strangely, you know, coherent. And and like I said before, this is like the precursor to real AI. I know, I know. You know the, the AGI, the, the um, artificial general intelligence that people have been talking about that really people associated AI with, they're saying that could be 10 years away. I, I say it's probably five or six, you wow. know, because all these narrow intelligence AIs are actually learning how to program themselves to be smarter and better to get to that point. Yeah. And that's why we're on such a collision course with um, something. <laughs> You know? <laughs> but I'm going to have my fun, you know, in the time, you know, if this, you know, I'm going to have my fun before this whole shit house goes up in flames. Uh, <laughs> Jim Morrison says, you know. well, I, it's like, you know, I, I don't know. It's, it's, I, I feel like, um, uh, you, you know, you have to choose how you relate to reality as it is. You know, if you, if you, if you think reality is like, hostile towards you and, and and there's nothing and everything's out to get you mm-hmm. then it will yeah it and it, will yeah yeah it. yeah it probably will but also it's like you know what kind of life are you gonna have with exactly. that whereas if yeah. you kind of go like okay what you know my feeling is you, that you shouldn't i don't know this is this gets into personal spiritual beliefs really but it's like mm-hmm. i feel like I don't know. You shouldn't be afraid of reality. You know, you're, 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 you're part of that reality. You're good. You're, you're good. So, you know, why is it reality's at least as good as you are? And there's other people. I don't know. Anyway. Okay. I I agree. I I refuse to think of the, that means I can see that people are thinking the end point. Okay. The AI is just going to take over and the world's going to end. Everybody's going to be out of a job. No one's going to be able to make money. You know, you can think that way and just wallow in the mud, but I, I prefer to think, okay, what are the benefits of this and how can I drive it towards a, a happier future? And, you know, and I, I prefer to go that way. And and also, what else are you going to do? It's like- Yeah, it's you, like stop working and <laughs> get, just be, just troll people online all day. Yeah. Are artists, you know, I it's mean, like, are, are you- a waste of your time. Are you going to, you know, you, it's like you kind of have to either, um, I you, you, you either- Ignore it and just go about what you're doing, which is fine if you want to do that, or try and fight against it, which is completely futile. Or you can try and learn the technology and go for the wild ride, go for the adventure and see what happens. You know, that's all you can do, you know, at at this point. Because you can't, because nobody knows what's going to happen. Nobody knows what's going to happen, and you can't stop it. There's no way in hell. But, 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 
But what no. you can do, uh, I, f I came to the conclusion that I think a fair way to view this situation as an artist is learn the technology or at least learn it enough to where you know, understand, understand what it can do. But you, mm -hmm. su you should also um, strongly support any kind of laws to uh to Thousand like percent. yeah to deal with anything any any copyright issues or it needs to be addressed yeah uh, you you should support that strongly and speak out for that as well you can do both things you can do both yeah. things and right now it's people are positioning it as like you're either on this side or you're on this side if you yeah. use ai you know, fuck You're you and anyone who <laughs> uses it. It's like, you know, for one thing, when you talk like mm. that, you turn everybody off who's not Mom's completely fight. angry. That's that's actually and why you push really them started... you push yeah. them to the other side of the room also. Really? It just yeah. shuts down. There's no communication, there's no working out the problems. It's not a winning strategy. Not at all. I mean, that's really why I be became so vocal, <laughs> you know, and kind of going into other people's threads and kind of bringing my, you know, real, my, I guess, knowledge, or at least my opinion, I'll also mm -hmm. just say it that way, you know, about things, because I care about these artists. I love my concept artist friends. Oh, yeah. I don't want them to be out of a job. You so are I'm one of them. Like, you yeah, are one I, of them. I'm them. It's like, I'm not like a, a guy that's just like, no, nah, AI, you know, screw humans. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. You know, I'm really not. It's my, when I try to engage people, it comes from a, a, from my heart, like right. from my love of like, I can see the writing on the wall right here. There's an avalanche of AI coming at you. You can punch at it all you want. It's just still going to flow past all the rest of, you know, past your fists and, and onto you, you know? So I don't know. I, I, I just really hope that, you know, people learn a little bit more about it. You know, don't trust me fully, like really, you know, use the, use the begrudgingly use the program and try to get your artwork out of it. Yeah. That's where I think people should start. And if you can, then go online, show the examples, get out there with that information. Right. But if you can't, start using it. Right. Even if you're going to continually try to figure out a way to get your art and to prove that it's wrong, you know, use yeah. it that way. Yeah. You know, that's a great way to, to learn it and to understand it. You know, there's a whole world of information out there. Um, you know, there, there is that mid journey where you just type some stuff, but beyond that, there's, there's stuff that I've been studying for over a year and I still don't understand it all. That wow. I, I take as much time now to work some of my, to do, to get my AIR as I ever did with any of my digital or 3D. Right, art. right. You know, there really is a lot to, that goes into it, especially once you try to think of getting it what exactly what you want. And that's right. the hard part. Yeah, it yeah. Really is. There's an art to that. And it's an art that people haven't quite, you know, wrapped their head around as of yet. You know, I th they, I, yeah, yeah an another point I wanted to bring up too is when the technology, you know, as far when things are all AI keeps writing itself and the programs get more and more and more, no one's going to be able to be on top of it. Everyone's going to be in the same boat because we can't keep up with what's happening yeah. at the top, at the top of the yeah. chain. So it's well, not, it's not like you're going to be like, you know. I don't know. There's not, there's going to be a point where you can't even adapt to it fast enough. So it's well, like, that's, that's that Ray Kurzweil guy says, eventually what we're going to have to do is implant computers into our brains. Wow. And that's the only way <laughs> that's really, the, you know, it's like that, that's the, you know, if you're scared now, they are think about that. Right. <laughs> but, um, but that is the only way. And he said this years. Yeah. Ago. Yeah. I saw that documentary on him. And, and so, you know, he, he, he said that you're going to have to put in actual computers into yourself to even to be able to keep up with AI. And that's what the singularity is when it gets to a point that things change so fast that even with augmented, you won't understand it all. Like oh then, my God. You know, it's so crazy. It, it's all like kind of one Borg kind of system. Um, and kind of speaking of the Borg thing, I, you know, I have kind of a hot take that, you know, probably won't be popular with people, but I kind of feel like maybe the price of giving your style that you've given to is okay when you think about what you get in back mm -hmm. you get back the entire world's knowledge of all art encompassed into a, a somebody that could help you create stuff so you give you know your little bits of you know what a human could do in his life you know the little little world of a human's you know learning and training and understanding you give that a little bit of that away to yourself into 
it, you know, it's kind of artistic socialism, which yeah. is kind of a, a, a sad, like a, right. always a, scary, a scary word for anybody. Right. Oh, I don't want to give my stuff, you know, to, to this guy that doesn't know anything about art and use it. But I, I do feel like that it's kind of like a combination. It's kind of like the internet where it's, it's all the information, you know, easily right. adjustable and findable and changeable, you know, right there, you know, at your fingertips, but you did have to give away, you know, your art school training, you know, right. your, all the years you spent trying to draw a perfect circle or right. all that kind of stuff. Yeah. You, know, you have to give a little and then you get the entire bit back. Right. Right. Yeah. I guess people would maybe, maybe anti AI people would say, well, I didn't have the choice in yeah. giving it away. That's the problem. And that's the sticking that's, point. That's what needs to happen. You know, I really feel like there needs to be a full on like, um, take it so my name is useless at prompt time mm -hmm. you know if okay you could put in Chazar, but it'll just come back with whatever right. you know just at, it needs to my name cannot be put into this system and that's really what needs to yeah. happen yeah and that it, would go, that would go a long way to I think it would to mending you know, the opt out opt out things one thing okay you, you know somebody has a thousand images you can't go press all that stuff but if you just put that name in there it stops it at, right at the, beginning and i i do feel like that needs to happen and i also do feel like that really won't affect the the ai that much you know with what the rest right of it, yeah it, it's learned it's still pretty dang good yeah okay it won't have you know joe deviant arts thing that he right over there <laughs> but yes it will have and, all of michelangelo's knowledge yeah and, and it's and it's got all of my okay okay imagine if there was no modern artists in the in the training set and then it, be, it continued using and it used the old masters to uh, create its artwork, the AI artwork. And then that gets fed back in to the AI mm -hmm. and makes new artwork. Mm -hmm. And then that gets keeps getting fed back and back and back. Yeah. There's not going to be any need for any modern artist to be in there at all oh, because everything all. would be based on old master's artwork and that's yeah. shit's already the best anyway so thousands like <laughs> of years yeah i agree it's always it's thousands of years of study it's like these people before digital it's like they'd learn from their dad their parents who learned their entire life of a certain thing and then they they learned you know it's like just built yeah, up yeah. knowledge that they came from the start it all started somewhere we're not making this up you know alone right um, but I think that if there was some kind of block out, even for any living artist, you know, if people are already scared of losing their job. They don't want to lose it because of their work. Right, they became yeah. part of this thing, yeah. you know? So it's, I, that I actually talked to Ahmad about that a little bit. Um, oh, cool. I was like, you know, I think really what needs to happen is just a, a cutoff right there. They're thinking of other things because, you know, it's, they, they also, like you mentioned, have a user base that wants to do certain things. So they're right. trying to make them happy right. and the artist happy at once, you know, and in their mind, they're not stealing from the artist. It's there. It's like uh, they learn learned from the style, but you know, that's, yeah. Yeah. It's such a complex issue. You know, I'm really stoked that you're talking about that, this with me, you know, it's like, I, oh, no, I, I'm glad I find it's super cool that you're, you're positive about this, you know, from where your standpoint, I think it'll yeah. be for a lot of people. Uh, well, I, you know, I just, I, I, I appreciate you coming on and talking about it because, uh, you know, just to see that, like, see the, the rage and the vitriol, um, it's like, which is understandable. Yeah. Yeah. I totally get it. I totally get it. It's just like this, this can't lead anywhere positive. It's not going to solve anything. It. It's going to just, it. people are already pissed. Walls to yeah. Stuff, and know, people but... already have walls up from everything else going on in the world already. Yeah. It's like, yeah. even Democrat, the artists. Republican, yeah. Now even the, all the artists are all, fighting. Oh, now we're, man. Yeah, now we're, we hate each other. <laughs> artists that were used to be friends and so, you know, people are mad at me because I'm into it. And <laughs> I know yeah. I said something. It's like, I said something on Facebook that was, I think you saw where it was like, I don't, you know, I, I when the CGI, uh, Jurassic Park thing mm -hmm. you know it's like it didn't destroy makeup effects like we thought it would yeah. it kind of like trying to offer I was just trying to be like hey don't be so worried don't fret. Try, yeah don't fret I was trying to offer something helpful and I got mm -hmm. a bunch of shit on that thread oh, yeah. and then I went over onto Twitter and I was like you know and that's where they're hardcore <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I, I did. I took kind of the the other side of it because, like I said, I I am sympathetic to the the, the copyright issues as well and the job losses and stuff like that. And I said, you know, mi you know, one thing that I I said something like it would be Mid Journey should at least offer free commercial use 
to any artist that's been trained mm, on the data set. That awesome. would be the least. I mean, that seems like even if you don't like that you weren't asked, that's something to say here. Yeah. Yep. You know, and acknowledging the artists. And yeah. and then I got a bunch of shit from from the uh the, the, the pro AI people. <laughs> like, yeah. You can't win for like, I can't be... <laughs> it's you so funny. It. Yeah, it's exactly. But 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 I it, but it's too important to just like sit it out. I, I feel and it and and it's it and, and it needs people need the, the two sides uh need to talk. So if there's, I think if there's any way that, especially the head, like you said, you you know the the guy who's who's the head of mm -hmm. uh, Stable Diffusion. If these kind mm -hmm. of people would maybe interact with the artist they're, community, they are it, doing that. They they said they told me that next week they're planning to do a bunch of stuff. Oh, that killer! Kind of show you know, kind of show this thing that I was talking about the how to opt out at least and to talk about and you know, how, how it how works. They care, how it, and how it, you know, that's the number one yeah. thing is. Are you are you a big huge, right. huge corporation or are you a human that really cares about you know how people are perceiving your product? Right. I, I find them you know every time I've talked to him, I've found him. You know, I'm really impressed. With these super smart dude, and you know, he really does care. He yeah. does. I think so I, I, leads to something. there's there's a perception that you know that these AI companies ruthlessly skirted, which I was thinking that too and and there, there may be some truth to it but where they i wouldn't say it this hardcore but there is a perception that they ruthlessly sneakily skirted the copyright issue by using the lion data set mm -hmm. which is supposed to not be made for commercial products mm -hmm. and they put and, and and they and they put it in the in the they didn't what there's a there's a if you haven't seen steven's uh Steven, his argument against AIs, you should definitely watch it because he he brings this up to where like with their music, their music AI, they specifically said, because we don't want to infringe on musicians copyright, we 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 don't basically we we haven't blah, 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 whatever it would, you know, and I'm really doing a bad job of explaining this, but 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 for the image AIs. They don't have that that same language in there. So mm -hmm. the perception is we can't get away. We 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 don't want to get sued by musicians, but artists are powerless anyway. So we're not even going to bother <laughs> asking them permission. And that's the way mm -hmm. it comes across. And you're going to, of course, get animosity from artists from that. Anybody, any yeah, artist agreed. seeing it that way wouldn't. And so so whether you know whether it's and and also the perception is um, that anytime you ask about using the lion data mm -hmm. that is made only for um <clears throat> non-commercial use in their in their training that they won't answer you they just ignore that question and they put it and they, they they're steering mm -hmm. the the uh conversation around issues that aren't really the main issues so mm -hmm. that's what the the yeah, uh, I, I agree with all that stuff they need to be 100 percent so, forthcoming so they need to be talking to the community and like really do. even if it's like a zoom where people can talk or like a mm -hmm. like a twitter space spaces where people can yeah. get up and you know like a town hall thing i think that mm -hmm. would go a long way because another thing i think if people understand just you explaining today how the thing works goes a long way to understanding what it is going me. on because a lot of people still think that it's like sampling it's taking little pieces of it images doesn't. on the internet and it's, it's like just impossible unless yeah. there has been a completely new way of compression that nobody has ever yeah, heard, right. learned about, then that's not the way it works. And yeah. in fact, if there was that good a compression, you would see, Hey, the new compression stuff, you know, like we solved this new compression problem. We can take a huge amount of data and compress it down into a handful. You like know, on that show, Silicon, like, like on Silicon Valley. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. remember the oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the it's middle exactly out compression like the, yeah you know speaking of compression as well it's like and as long as along the lines of we don't know what this thing's capable of they figured out that stable diffusion can figure out how to compress stuff like on its own like that it's that it beats standard compression Whoa. that it fig figured out like new ways to do it you know it's it's not something that could actually hold that much data but it, it is it beating the current amount you know Crazy. so it's like what can these guys do you oh know, yeah yeah, like curing cancer 
curing diseases. Yeah. That's, the, that's, I mean, that's the other thing is that that chat GPT, the GPT three is in use for developing new medicines that it's doing an amazing job. In fact, I think that's how the COVID medicine stuff came out, which I probably shouldn't mention that because, Oh, they're, you know, part of the, right. <laughs> but, um, you know, it is, it, it is in use currently already to figure out because it, it thinks day and night, you know, right. it, and it knows everything yeah. and it's never gets tired and it's not by it, or actually it kind of is biased currently, but yeah, right. um, that's another issue. You know, that there's a, about. There yeah. is a million issues to it, but we gotta, we gotta work this stuff out. You know, yeah. it's, I want it worked out all that copyright stuff out personally as an artist myself. Right. You know? But, you know, in really in my journey and looking through, I've never seen anything from a simple prompt that would get anywhere near a uh, 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 copyright infringement. It wow. just doesn't work that yeah. way. You know, yeah. there's other ways to do it for sure. You know, using AI. What about, not- yeah, yeah, right. But what, what about that National Geographic cover of the Afghan girl? Have you seen that? Like, I didn't look into yes. it, but I did see a that, meme. That is another example of IMG, IMG to image. So what somebody oh, so did someone is fed took that-, that image, downloaded it, inserted it into the AI and said, change it. Right. Same as if I took that image, put it in Photoshop, Photoshop and, changed, and it. changed, flipped it, changed it, put a filter on okay. it and said, this is mine. That is what every one of those is that. And in fact, if you ever see one that's flipped horizontally, when someone says, hey, they stole my artwork and they show their artwork and a flipped version, that's a human that did that. The AI never flips anything. Oh, wow. It has enough to think about without flipping any flipping right. it horizontally. It doesn't you know, need to flip. <laughs> that's a 100% every, if you see those, that's a human based thing where somebody flipped it and changed it a little bit. They flipped it in hopes of the person not being able to see right, the original, right. you know, and that that's why it's flipped. Funny, uh, but this these are human issues, right? You know, that's someone breaking somebody's copyright, right? Right. You do that with any instrument at all, you know? Yeah, a, true. A, a fax machine could do that. Yeah, you know, yeah. That's 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 true. That's true. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It seems like f- the, where you could really. I don't know, man. We I, I don't want to keep you because I we I could seriously go five hours <laughs> and we'll, and yeah. probably uh, well we we should maybe we could do a part two to this at some point because I know people are going to go well what about this all the things I didn't yeah, ask I but I, in there, yeah. <laughs> but it I do would be nice like a year later to revisit this like okay yeah. let's, let's see what oh, a year maybe not year maybe a, maybe like a week later <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this maybe, exactly. it's going. it'll feel like a ten years has passed <laughs> like the, the, the the other thing I think that people are scared about is the rapid advancements. Yeah. Like I, I've been into technology and, you know, things like that my entire life, but I've never seen anything advance this quickly, you know, from yeah. where it was last January, yeah, this yeah. Real entry kind of, Oh, that's pretty interesting. That's, that's cool. I know. Imagine it now that it's like photorealistic, beautiful people. One year. You know, What's it going to look like in one, one year? year? I can't even imagine. Exactly. Yeah, if you, if you take because the AI is helping to build it now. Now yeah. that AI is up and running, you know it's that that Chat GPT thing. That's it. It went from Chat or version three, which was kind of like a, a novelty kind of thing, and everybody's like, okay, once it hits four, that's going to be you're just going to be blown away. But they released three point five, and that's what that Chat GPT thing is. So, mm-hmm. so basically, it's it's got even more room to grow. That they're still actively working on making it much much better you know so it's like wow. these advancements are just too like just too much i can <laughs> like I, I hope it works out you know i mean i got my fingers crossed and i'm you know packing my bags for the future and trying to gain the knowledge that i need that i can continue to you know keep these little leashes around these guys the shot caller and making them do my bidding and not <laughs> yeah. not vice versa yeah you know? yeah that's yeah. what i'm fighting for right now yeah just understanding them you know right. leading them yeah, learning to use them and not all you can do. letting them use you. I have one more final question from John, my friend John Chen, who's a Dark Art Society member. He's really awesome 3D artist too. Oh, that guy, yeah, yeah, he's, he, he's great, really right? good ZBrush artist. Yeah, he's yeah. awesome. Uh, he just on a technical note, he wanted to know uh, if you train your if you train your own AI mm-hmm. on your on your work. Like, do you do like where you feed yeah. it in and train it and uh, mm-hmm. And if you, uh, or if you, or do you use rake the regular AI packages? Like, did you have like a, like, uh, a custom meets trained AI system or do you use the, the regular, uh, uh, regular packages and how are you using AI in your pipeline? 
Um, well, first off, the I do train it on my own stuff. Um, you, you've probably seen that Lenza app. That's kind of what brought all this to the forefront. Mm -hmm. And Lenza app uses a thing called um, Dream Booth. And I learned Dream Booth about three months ago. And if you look at back, back on my Facebook thing, it says, I found the killer app for AI. Yeah. It's this thing where you can feed it images of yourself and it comes back as paintings and all that kind of stuff. So right. three months later, boom, that came out. And I, I happened to be correct on that one is that that was the thing that people love pictures of themselves. Right. You know? And, you know, I don't like posting selfies, but I will post a thousand <laughs> AI created selfies <laughs> myself because the AI did it and not me. Right. Um, and, you know, so that that thing kind of brought it to the forefront. But I do use the the original of that, the dream booth, where you can feed it a bunch of stuff. And there's the other thing that I mentioned is the hyper network is you can bring, you know, put in all, you know, all your artwork and then it kind of understands, mm -hmm. you know, your um, your style and you could actually, you know, put it back on there. But, but I, I personally don't use that all that much, you know, because I, I there's an unlimited treasure trove of just standard, you know, prompting, mm. you know, so how I use it in my pipeline is I, I, a lot of times just create something very simple in Photoshop, like a person. And I pose it like the arms up, you know, kind of thing. I make a stick figure guy. Mm -hmm. This is the guy I want. And then I prompt it, a guy with his hands up like that. And it fills that form exactly of what it is. Wow. And then I might do a background where I'll draw a bunch of sketchy stuff and say, that's rocks as an element. And I'll put that in Photoshop and behind it. Um, and then I put together a full image, you know, really directly um, uh, done by me. You know, it's that nobody could argue that the AI completely did it. I, I fed, I drove it to do exactly right. what I want, but it did all the details. Like I'm an art director and I have people right. working for me. I'm wow. sitting there. I don't want to cramp my wrist. So, hey, Larry, you go do the <laughs> grass field of all the pieces of grass in there. And then once that's back in there, you know, I, I might do like some art direction to it. I might draw over it and say, no more long grass or greener grass. And I'll give it a little you know, uh, a swatch of the color I want, you know, kind of things like that. Wow. So I direct it through that. And then you have, you end up with a full image and then you can take that full image back and say, okay, now that as an oil painting or this right. as a sketch or this using that in painting thing, but with this new head on it, you know, that kind or, of thing. Or so, variations of this, exactly. or this so with different this, colors. Yeah, or... there's this thing called denoising when you do image to image and you tell, basically what it does is it takes the image and does a denoising amount. So it basically puts all those dots kind of back on it. And the more denoising you have, the more blurry it gets. So the more room for creativity it has to put stuff back on. Wow. It's very interesting. You know, so if you really want it a lot different, you really denoise it. So it like starts to blur out and it has to refigure out your thing. Or you can put it so I want it very much like this, but different. And you do a, a low denoising. So it does a little bit of filter on it and then redraws it from there, you know, usually better. Wow. Um, that, that's more or less kind of how I work. But it, it's very it's very much like how I used to work, you know, in a lot of ways. Right. But, I'm not, I'm doing 10 times as much because I'm not wasting my time on those little details. I could go in there and model them, 3D model it. I've been doing that for years. I, but, I, yeah, right. But why, so why bother? Why waste my <laughs> stupid time on something that I'm just going to paste, post onto Facebook and five people are going to go, oh, that's cool. <laughs> you know, that, well, that's kind of where I come down to. It's, it's about my idea, my concept, and that's what I'm presenting. Not the how long it took me, like I dipped a tooth toothpick into paint and did this dot by dot you know right. like, oh. you know to me i don't care about that it's it's kind of like what what my idea was or what i'm trying to present yeah i mean once uh the unreal engine came out that was like okay i'm going to place a bunch of mountains in the in the background you didn't feel like you had to model the mountains yeah you know what i mean it's like oh, that yeah. would make not unreal make sense now, you know they made um they bought mega scans which is a collection of thousands and thousands of 3d scan high quality 3d scan stuff so a lot of my job like building stuff in unreal is just grabbing those mega scans putting them in there and adjusting them um do right. i still feel like i completely made that image yes yeah. even though i took basically more or less clip art i used it in a way that became something that it wasn't before right. and that's how i feel like i have a connection to it and that i did it well i did the, i did a uh, an nft of animation of these like spiraling skeletons Mm -hmm. like like kind of like wavering through the air in like a line of them and um just like an endless loop and 
I didn't want to build a skeleton. I didn't have time to build a. I would like to actually. I would have liked to have modeled a skeleton model just so I could say, "Here's my skeleton model. I could use for all kinds of things." But I didn't have time, so I just bought a cheap skeleton yeah, model on works. on a website. I paid for it, and then I put it in the animation, and it's like, yeah. you know, <laughs> and nobody cared. Whether and nobody cared because you spend a week make you know going up grabbing a picture from the internet as reference and building on top of it, you know, you kind of end up in the same spot. Right, You're right. Copying somebody, something that somebody else did, you know, with the reference. Yeah. Okay. One last thing. One last thing. I just, I, I asked people for questions for you and then I, and then they, I didn't look at them until just now. Oh. So I just want to see if any stand out. Um, sorry. Uh, 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 oh, no, these are two esoteric mm. uh uh okay we covered that uh hmm oh man okay <laughs> sorry what about sure. deep fakes do you i mean is this does this fall under the the law issue you know making like deep fakes of celebrities yeah. you know wow. That's a whole nother can of worms right there. I mean, because it now, seems like there's just with there's... stable diffusion. I can make, and this is something I put on the online, but I can use their meta humans, which is their fake 3d. Right. Character. I can do an animation of that and say Tom Cruise. And that's all I have to write is Tom Cruise. And it'll change his face to Tom Cruise and even match it to right. the for animation, you know, and that's just barely beginning. So there's, there's a lot to think about with so, that as well. You it, know, a lot of misinformation, a yeah, lot of, you're yeah, really not yeah. going to be able to believe anything that's online in the next couple of years, yeah. you know, unless you personally, you know, knew, knew something detailed. It's, if it's just purely online, you know, if someone presents me nowadays with something, here's a screenshot of how it proves that AI is stealing. I'm like, I could make that in Photoshop in two seconds. You know, I can't, unless right. I know that where it came from, it's really hard for me to believe anything even already, but in the yeah, global way. I guess it's just, that comes, you know, a lot of these questions people are asking comes down to uh, the laws will need to be challenged and changed mm -hmm. and adapted to this new technology. We need be a new, we need a court case. Really. Yeah. Full on like uh Supreme court court case. Right. About, you know, we really do. I, I, I mean, I would love that if that happens. Yeah. You know, we, I, I would love to have all the facts presented, you know, in uh, with people sworn, you know, sworn testimony, you know, all that kind of stuff. It, I think it needs to happen before people will trust it. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Anybody, but, I, you know, anybody, any artist should want that and, mm -hmm. and you should be suspicious you know, on the a on the pro AI side, there's there are some, there's also some real assholes on that side that are just like yeah, so yeah. entitled. They have this attitude that they are so entitled to whatever the fuck they want, yeah, and nobody, you know, they're good. they're but it's like they're probably twelve. You know, you can never tell on the internet. They're probably like little kids. Yeah. The thing is, on the other side of it, I have people calling me a thief because I use AI, you know, so it's like. Yeah, I know. You know personally, I know. You know, really, I have my own ethical standards. I never put anybody's um, name on the thing. Sometimes I put Giger, some of that, you know, that like people that have passed on. All right. I never, as a rule, even put anybody's name. Generally, I don't even put anybody's name. And you don't need it. Like if right, you look right, right. all the work that I've done the last three or four months, I have not put one artist name on there. Right. Not at all. Yeah. So there are ethical ways to do it. You know, it's, even it's, as it is now, there are ethical ethical ways I to think use there are. it. Just use just type the thing and not a painting by Mark Simonetti or you know who right. it is, which does some amazing AI stuff if you put that name in there but <laughs> <laughs> and i only say that too because i talked to him at thu and he he um was super worried that really he, his problem was kind of a little bit obvious or opposite is that he, he at the time he had put his name in and the thing he got back was really really crappy so he was mad, he was kind of mad about that. that he, he was, so, but then I got home and tried his name, and it actually was turned out as like, holy crap! They did rip that off from him. His style, like a, you can recreate. Right. And, and that, I found that that's the way it is. And really, after coming back from that festival and having like fireside chats and really finding out how people felt, that's when I completely stopped using any kind of name. Mm. And that's also when I found out you don't need it. 
you know right you, right you could explain the style you without know, using the artist's name yeah yeah, yeah and yeah. then it's a blend of all these different things you know that it knows but it's not particularly that artist style right. that you're working hard and developing interesting you know, yeah look wow that's interesting so, yeah, there's, there's lots to think about. yeah yeah okay I'll, I'll, I'll... i mean i was kind of <laughs> sick of talking about this like six months ago and then all of a sudden this all like popped up and you know the lens of thing it's like okay now it's like getting serious it's yeah it's you, like, really, you like unfortunately started. yeah you you have to it's 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 your duty it's your duty yeah. to speak out on it because you it you know uh because because you who you are and, and how you're using it um so unfortunately you've been chosen against your will <laughs> no, I, I actually like talking about it but you know especially it, until people like attack me you know yeah like, yeah you know, i feel like i have to you know fight back like yeah you know, get, I, I just don't have time for that. yeah that's one I, I guess that's what one thing i want to end on is is um a call for peace <laughs> and calm in this war because like like i said when i see someone when i'm offered an ultimatum or i feel like i'm being bullied for thinking about something i'm automatically like fuck you yeah, fuck again. you i'm either gonna go you know my if it makes me want to go on the other side out of spite yeah just and, you know what i mean just oh, just because you're yeah. making me you're trying to bully me and fuck you i make my own decisions and so it makes me want to be like I'm just going to go over the, I mean, and then, but I, but I, I make my own decisions for myself and everybody should make their own decisions, what they think is right when it comes to this sort of thing. Um, uh, particularly this, this AI situation. And I just, I feel like it's only hurting whatever side you're on. It's only hurting the cause by not listening and trying to understand the other side's concerns because both sides are passionate and have concerns, you know, really they, they both are, yeah. You know, and they, they both kind of feel the same way about their own issues in, in the issue. So um, <clears throat> I think it's really important that we at least try and be sympathetic to the other side or understand them. Just understand it and and feel like you can raise the issues without being attacked. Because when you attack it, it's just like. Ah, defenses go pe yeah people are just being nobody wins yeah yeah people are just being too emotional it's like it's not gonna help you you know you can react this way maybe it'll make you feel better you know it's not there's no, there isn't one thing that anybody can do to stop ai from taking over almost every single thing in the world right. <laughs> that, there just there just isn't you know? let's start from there you know that's yeah, where you like should it, start you can from do whatever that's, you want that's the reality the, the yeah i mean one, once the option is having something automatically created just on a whim you know whether it's poetry um programming artwork um song, contracts uh, writing contracts i mean this stuff can make detailed drafts for you instantly over any kind of data that you want you know this the genie's not going to go back in the bottle no it, way. it really isn't there's you know no so. way. there's no way i just try to advocate for people to try to think of a positive way to, to move against it and you know even if you are going to move against it try to think of a non you know, uh, attack way to do it. Possibly. Oh yeah, a constructive a way. Really a constructive fine, way that, that yeah, find use your Google image searches, find some examples of some some actual stealing stuff, and then make sure they didn't use image to image because that's not going to hold up in court of right. person that in. Um, you know, things like that. It's just the more you understand, I think, the easier it is to 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 battle. Yeah, and you if know? you and if you want your issues addressed, <coughs> excuse me, start by. Be, remaining calm and expressing your your concerns and and try and get a dialogue going that's what i would suggest people do if you're just yelling and screaming and freaking out it's just not going to it's just not going to help anything it's going to make things worse so yeah. <laughs> that's my plea right now not, i don't i don't besmirch anyone for being scared or you know Same. fighting against it it's a natural response you know and i knew it was going to happen yeah. you know over the as i saw this progress i'm like eventually pretty soon here we're going to have a really you know the people that get paid for creating still images of ideas you know those people are going to be the first you know really kind of the people that are going to be affected by this most mm -hmm. you know? and it, it's those artists that are attacking it the hardest right now which is not crazy at yeah all. yeah right so, very like you know that yep this is how it has to happen you know kind of stuff um 
but I, all my artist friends, I know they're, they're so invaluable, you know, it's like their ideas and their concepts and the way that they think that puts them on a level so far above the prompt jockey. Right. But I really, I really think that, that being an artist is going to put us ahead on all this. Yeah. You know, all and done. I agree. I agree. Wow. That was amazing. I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much yeah, for coming on. I don't want to <laughs> keep you on for much longer. And like I said, I'll probably be hitting you up when, when I get beaten to shit online for not asking <laughs> the right questions oh. that I should have known, <laughs> but, um, don't hang up. Uh, so, so I could give you a proper goodbye. Um, but oh. is there, is there any final words before we, before we end it? Um, I don't think so. Um, but just thanks for having me on. I respect the hell out of you. You're one of my favorite people and my favorite artists. Oh. So I'm really honored to be able to chat with you again. Thank you. I feel the same way about you. Likewise, you could ask anybody. I always, I Thank always you. speak very highly of you. Oh, so, cool. so just um, say goodbye to the audience. That's the last thing we have to, yeah. to do. Bye, audience. See you. See you. Thanks for sitting through it. <laughs> <laughs>